Oh, man, back in the Fire Kids studio. Brian Callen died of old age, guys. I <laughs> hate to break the news. No, just kidding. He's shooting the Goldbergs. Uh, he wishes he could be here. But today I'm joined by the the stars, the dynamic duo of the Phone Booth Fighting podcast, Frank Mayer and Richard Hunter. Guys, thanks for coming. Thanks for having us. Brian. Yeah, you, got, you guys, especially Frank, There's there's a lot of guys who – we have on, and then we're like, we're good for a while. For a year, we're good. Your guy, you, whenever you want on, you're on, man. Cool, you, man. It's you and Chael are really the only fighters I will have on. I, I could have you guys on every Wednesday. Oh, that's a good company to be on. Yeah, Chael's, right? Chael's good, too. Yeah, Chael's a beast. Yeah. And there's a few guys where I'm like, ah, let's wait. And Brian's like, yeah, let's wait. But you guys, any time, door, door open policy here. Thanks, man. We so, appreciate it. Yeah, well, what's a, going on, fellas? I'm a I'm a uh, regular uh, uh, fighter in the kid listener, so I'm just happy to be here in the new studio and see how it's uh, turned out this is beautiful man I yeah love it's this. different right yeah we were uh we were we were both uh lamenting uh stories of of broken rss feeds before the show so we're speaking that <laughs> podcast language people don't understand no that they don't, nerd language they don't know the pain the struggle the stress yeah podcasting stress. is not all the glamour it appears to be no um, there's a there's a crazy matrix world behind it that runs this whole thing that's man. right it's not all it's not all cocaine and unicorns in podcasting no, no. it's not on our not. show it's no. just not so you guys just drove in from vegas yep just for this show and then we're talking before this and then frank you're headed to russia yeah. when is that is that tomorrow or the, yeah, the thursday I I, either wednesday or thursday i'm waiting to get my flight itinerary why and let, let's just kick it off with this why in the hell are you flying to russia well i've been doing color for uh color commentating for uh acb uh, it's a phenomenal league man those guys i mean uh, when people ask me about it like i'm like just think about a whole car full of khabibs you know what i mean uh everybody there's just they're and what's killers. that stand for uh absolute uh Come championships on. berkut mm. and it's just an all russian league it's kind of like well, you're would you say it's like bodog is that a fair comparison? Yeah, maybe a little bit. They fight in an octagon or a cage, and um, they don't just have. They had a couple guys from Sweden, the Brazilians. It's just a European fight league, I guess is the best way to describe it. So you have guys from all over. Uh, they have a lot of tough Russians in there too, and uh, honestly, a lot of the guys there, their talents through the roof. Some of the fights I've watched there, that an Armenian guy, you know. Uh, you know is is unbelievable their skill level like you'd be really impressed with how good they are they'd make an immediate impact over here in the u.s i think the only thing that really hamstrings them is that they don't speak english and if you look at the we were talking about that the yeah. history of all our champions the guys who don't speak english well just don't sell like fighting itself is not enough like our fan base they want to get to know who you are and if they can't understand you that's just a huge barrier i mean look at anderson silva i mean the guy still holds records that, you know, are where people are still like the level of Demetrius Johnson are trying to chase down. The guy was untouchable. The guy looked like a martial arts god there for years. Not a huge seller compared to what, for how good he was, not the pay per view blockbuster he could have been. Had he, could you imagine if he just spoke English really well? Well, look, look at, just look at the di the dynamic of the UFC now. It's, it's really look at the owners, especially, but we can get in that after this. But, <laughs> It's really a league of entertainment. Like, you yes. have to sell yourself. You have to talk because just winning fights isn't good enough. Look at Mac Max Holloway. He's won not 10 in a row. A lot of people don't know him. Khabib, probably the best 155er on the planet. Not a draw. Not yeah. a draw. You yeah. look at, uh, uh, you know, vice versa. Look at Cain Velasquez, and uh, he's not really uh, a huge draw in the Spanish community because he doesn't speak Spanish very yeah. well or up to par. Yeah, that's um, one of the montages they actually have there over there in the uh, in uh, the ACB is uh, uh, more fight, less show, or less show, more fight. I forget which one goes first, but uh, they don't even do walkouts. So they kind of basically they say, hey, yeah. look, we don't want to do a huge buildup and get people behind fighters as far as an entertainment value. We don't. Basically, they're saying we don't want Conor McGregor. That's not what That's we want. That's interesting. We I, just want pure fight fans that want to watch two guys walk in here and kill each other. And if you like that, then you'll be a fan of us. Because I guess basically they're saying it's kind of like, the, like, look, the UFC already has the entertainment model down. How are we going to compete with them? But if we compete just on pure fighting ability, then you know if you just you put it on mute, you don't care who the guy is beyond the fact of just watching two martial artists fight. But, but why not be the big? 
huge show, which Russia really doesn't have right now, and and be that UFC of Russia because UFC is really not in there. Because mm-hmm. Khabib, he's a huge draw in Russia. I've heard arguments Connor's actually a bigger draw in Russia. His fan base in Russia is enormous. No, so when no, people say base, when people huge. say ah Khabib versus Connor in Russia, Khabib will sell it out. Connor would probably sell that thing out. No disrespect to Khabib. Um, it's tough because kickboxing really never caught on in America. Again, they don't tell the story. Boxing, I think boxing talent wise is better than ever, but they don't tell a lot of the guys' stories. It's a huge, maybe it's just an American thing because I yeah. feel like in Russia they do care about the fighting. In Japan they do care about yeah. the technique and the actual fighting. But in America we have so much, we're invested in so story much lines. content. We need storylines and we need a reason why to tune in and buy that pay per view. Yeah. You, you look at the last uh, UFC 206. Well, I mean, how many times are we pressured card. to? I mean, you've been backstage, you know, two days before the fight. You go back behind the camera, like, okay, tell us how you're going to beat the guy. You're like, oh, well, this, that. And it's like, ah, it's too nice. Like, they, you've been there. You're talking about Eric Talent. Yeah. He, he, he was the long time. I, he works with Lex McMahon now at Titan, but. So Frank speaking this gentleman named uh, Eric Talent who you do those you know right before the pay-per-view yeah, goes the sound bites you sit there. down and you're like you know tonight I'm going to show the reason why you know I'm going to knock blah blah With blah the, out ha, ha, you ha, yeah ha, in the background ha, ha, yeah. <laughs> yeah those probably it depends on the guy I've seen Shane Carwin sit there for an hour to try and get some cuz it's just not in his personality <laughs> yeah. to be that guy but they're just looking for that sound bite looking for that sound bite I was a one hit quitter. In and out. I was there at five minutes. Like, done. They're like, you know what? You're talking too much shit. Mm. You were a guy who did well with it, too. I can do well. I can step you, into yeah. character and do Yeah, that. man. But I mean, actually, Joe Silva gave me a good piece of advice. Because at first, like, I was like, oh, I mean, you know, I can see you're trying to get me to talk a certain way, but that's not really my personality. And then Joe was like, but it's a part of your personality. It might not be who you are, but there's a part of you that is arrogant and cocky. True. And there's a part of you. So just, don't make something up, but let's just focus on that part of your personality. That's fair. You know, I'm like, oh, okay, I can do that. You know, like, you know, let's not, you know, you're, you're, you're a balance of humility and arrogance at the same time. But let's just get rid of the stopper of humility right now. Let's not sit there. Let's just put that to the side and just be more brash. And that came out, especially in your Brock Lesnar yeah. fights. Now, those were, Brock, remember Brock, they were like, Frank said this, he's all, just like ripped his mic off. I was like, I'm fucking done. We're like, God damn, Brock. Like, show a little, show a little pride, bud. That was hilarious. He talks better words than me. Yeah, just caveman instinct. He was just like, dude, fuck it, and just ran yeah. off. Well, see, I, I actually think that's why Frank always came across as as authentically intimidating was it was pointed, but it was calm. And it was like if I was watching that, I'd be thinking, boy, he's he's really criticizing me. And it sounds like he knows what he's talking and about. And it's the truth. You know, yeah, right. Because <laughs> well, you, 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 yeah. you look at the on the other uh, spectrum of this, like Ben Rothwell. Yeah. Who he's I mean, God bless he's Ben. Oh, yeah, he, and he was bad. like. Hey, like he got the mic, and even John Anker was like, "Jesus Christ, what is going on?" But you can what think, about those evil laughs? <laughs> and everyone's all. But it's funny because he's a really nice guy. He's great, right? he's but it's brilliant. so bad because I'm sitting there going, "Man, I really like Ben, but that hurts." I'm to embarrassed watch. right now. But the thing, <laughs> it's like watching your buddy get a role in a movie. You're like, all right, cool. And you're like, "Damn, dude. God, he's a bad actor." <laughs> and you got did you then, practice at all? That was the best cut, <laughs> dude, dude. Oh man, I have some stories about that. I have a friend who was in a huge movie, and he gets done. She's like, "What do you think?" I'm like, oh, dude, that was sick, man. That was that was fucking sweet. Did you train at all for it? Like, did you just show up, or how does this work? Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, but that's the 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 game these days. Yeah, like Conor McGregor has set this standard, and yeah. everyone's like, "Fuck, I want to be Conor. How do I do it?" Look at Max Holloway right now. He, he went on this whole spiel how you got to sell yourself, it's a different business, and blah, blah, blah. I think it's good and bad. Because as a, a pure uh, MMA fan and, and fighter, it's like, man, it's not about that. But as a, you step back and look at it, the only way you're going to make money if it is about that. Think of how many fighters there's there's been who they don't have the personalities, they're just really good uh, fighters. We don't even well, hear I think, about I think too, I wish I could to like, Max and some of the other guys. If you really want to do that at Connor's level... You can't talk about doing it either. It kind of breaks character. I agree. You know what I mean? You can't sit there and go, All well, right. I'm trying to sell myself or do this. Or or especially like after a fight, you can't sit there and go, well, I just I don't really think what I said. I just kind of made it up. 
Like you notice, Connor never does that. He's he never, all in. He never ne- backtracks. Never, never backtracks. Never breaks character. Basically, is what I, you know. You can't sit there, and that's why, like, I would never talk shit about a guy I was fighting in a way that I couldn't articulate. Like, for example, I remember it was right before I fought a, a Czech Congo, and he just fucking hated me. He was so hated. irritated. He turned his back to it. Yeah, in. so irritated because again, when it came to breaking down the fights, I'm like, all right, what am I going to say about my guy? Oh, he's shitty on the ground. Right? Correct. But I wasn't off. And then afterwards, Correct. when he got really mad, I'm like, wait a minute. You're upset? Like, if we, like, it wasn't like I said you got shitty stand up or you got a gut. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I didn't make something up that's like, well, what the fuck are you talking about? That's why he got so mad because it's true. Yeah, I was like, if we all had a jiu jitsu competition right now, all the heavyweights, we just did a tournament. You're dead last. <laughs> you and Pat Barry are struggling for last place. <laughs> <laughs> it might look like two guys fighting over a bar of soap. If, you know this, I mean? if this is dodgeball of jiu-jitsu, you guys are going to pick la- dead last. Dead Matter last. of fact, they're going to force you to be on my team. <laughs> yeah, <I'm> like, <laughs> it's so true, uh, though. Like, yeah, And then you just blast them with that overhand he's rocked and he submitted him yeah yeah, yeah. put him to sleep that was a good night that was a great night uh but that was the baffled me afterwards i was like wait a minute like i'm not making something up that's not true like i focused on something that could be true it's like all right you know like oh, what has he proven himself here no so I'll, I'll bring that up you know what i mean but it's the truth yeah and anytime i think it when you're in those debates with someone and it is kind of a debate you're like breaking them down it's no different than the, to me than the presidential uh debate where you're looking for flaws in people yeah. but you're not making it up and the no. reason when they get so upset is because it's true yeah, if you hit right. home, the, right. the, the last time that you know that i fought and it hit home with travis Travis Brown. I was like, all right, this guy is a six foot seven monster. He's ranked number three in the world. Probably shouldn't be fighting him. I don't know why they have me fighting him. Um, what can I talk shit about? I'm sitting there, I'm like, well, he switched camps. He's probably pretty, he, it might fuck with him a little bit if I talk about his camp. That Glendale camp does not have a good track record. His head coach does not have a good track record. I'll go after that because skills wise, he's an absolute nightmare. I can't make fun of his skills. There's nothing there. He does everything better than me except for jujitsu. And so uh, I started attacking that and he got so upset. And I was like, dude, if you, that's how I know you're insecure about your change of camps. Because anyone make fun of me, I'm Which like, is yeah, weird okay. because everybody who's a jock, right? I mean, I, maybe, maybe in the music industry, you have to tell me if it works the same. But that's the first thing, like my kids, like my wife, my wife grew up with all women, right? She has three sisters, mom, dad was out of the life at a young age, right? And so sometimes when the kids razz on each other, we have kids over, she's like, well, how can you say that? I'm like, Jennifer, stop. That's how, yes. that's how guys, and, and Bella's an athlete, so I'm like, that's how athletes talk to each other. Yeah, we, man. we screw with each other. I said, and the first time you sit there and go, hey, you're screwed. You know what I mean? Like super screwed. <laughs> That's <laughs> blood in the water. Oh, you man. better let everything roll off you. Hey, you suck it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. And I enjoy it too. And Whoa. your father, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, man. You gotta like there's play a banter. Back. It's almost like guy code, especially in locker rooms. Not right. Not grab them by the pussy that Trump talks about. But it's like there, there's this dialect back and forth. Yeah. The, it's it, it you know what it's like. And it's you like, can't show sensitivity. You can't if you sit there and go, Oh, that really bugs me what you said to yeah. me. Huh? Everybody's gonna look at you like, oh man, get up. You're gonna have a rough fucking but day. It's the same thing if 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 you have a friend and there's two homosexual men walking down the street, I don't give a fuck. That doesn't bother me. If your friend goes, oh, hell no. Fuck them, man. Talked about fuck this, this yeah. guy. And you're like, hey, man, to quote my good friend Joe Rogan, are you worried that dicks are delicious? Right. Why are you so upset right now? <laughs> right. Why do you give a fuck that they're into each other? Yeah. I, it's, I, it's, it's that sensitivity thing. Yeah, man. like I, there's something deep there. Yeah, man. hey, man, who I, cares I'll that they you, suck dick? I'll tell you another world where there's, uh, there's a parallel, though, and you, you're uh, learning this now, is stand-up comedy. Is this the same thing as far as like comedians dealing with each other and you know you can't let somebody know that they've gotten the better of you or whatever and you're riding each other and with Conor McGregor going back to that what he, I think his real skill is is improv. If he were a stand-up comedian, his specialty would be crowd work mm. because being in the when when I'm doing UFC media, so when I'm in the press conference situation, we're his crowd, and as much as he is is roasting his opponent, he's also working the crowd. He can read a crowd. He I can read the vibe. I, I tell you, and he, he's There's never certain comics who are, yeah. who are who are really really bad. I just did a spot at the Laugh Factory, and it was a it was a more ethnic crowd. You know, if you're it, it, darker crowd, right. dark, a lot more pepper than salt, which I'm cool. I grew up around all black people. I'm I'm gay, man. I didn't even know that. I'm like, yeah, let's do it, man. I love this shit. 
the guy before me was doing bad uh, impressions of the way black people talk. And I'm like, mm. well, and he's from, you know, not from America. I'm like, well, you, you gotta know your crowd, man. Yeah. Like, you, you can't do that here. Maybe do it up the street where it's not urban night, you idiot. You yeah. Know? Well, the, I, the best example I ever saw of Connor with this. So we're in the, uh, the press conference for, uh, it was for the Diaz fight, for the first Nate Diaz fight. And uh, one of the guys next to me in the media asked Connor, I noticed that you don't have a belt on the poster. So even though he's fighting at welterweight, he is, mm. does not have the featherweight title. Where's your belt? And without missing a beat, Connor looks up at the poster and he's like, I was thinking the same thing. He goes, and then he goes on this whole thing about how he's going to launch an investigation into, uh, obviously, there are some people in the poster department who have become complacent, That's right. and he's coming somebody. he's coming for their heads, right? <laughs> but he, he remembers because three months later, the next press conference, I asked him about how, if the investigation had concluded, <laughs> and he had a whole other story the for The poster me. switched, though. Oh that? yeah, no, they that's what he said. The poster. He's like, "Did you see the poster?" He's he like, "Switched uh, the poster." Yeah. Really? That's power, my friends. Yeah. Because yeah, that's superpower. Oh, man, when you sell the way he sells, you have and, your, your power is your ability to make money. And 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 we, you know, a lot of people see the numbers that he sells and we're like, "Yeah, he's doing great." I've seen the actual numbers, how I had access to, I have no idea. And if I can see that those numbers, his management can see those numbers. It's insane how big of a star that kid is. Yeah. Not not even close. No one else is even remotely close. Yeah. And he knows that. And that's why he's doing these games. He can. Uh, I, and I think all the betterment for us as fighters. I know like some of the other guys are a little sensitive about it. Like, oh, man, that guy is being – I'm like – It's jealousy. Hey, you know, the more he pushes the envelope – the rest of us get dragged with them. You know it's what I mean? The like ceiling. Yeah, the, you know he's pushing the ceiling up. You know, like I have no problem riding on the coattails. It's like, but your life improves. So you're telling me that you want to, you would live at a lesser level and know that you know it's all on you and there's no Connor. But there could be a Connor and he's going to be number one. You'll never get to have that spot. But your quality of life's going to increase. That's good, right? Yeah, he's, he's and other guys don't sport. think that way. They're like, ah, oh, fuck that. You know, I, that's I, the fighter's mentality. Yeah, I'm like. I guess I don't have the fighter mentality because I'm like, fuck it, let the little guy go off, man. Fuck him. Like, the better he does, uh, I, I'm rooting for the guy. I mean, I might break down his fighting style and look at it and go, well, you know, fuck, man. After the Diaz fight, I really saw some That's flaws fine here to and there. That's that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But as far as, like, his ability as an entertainer, I'm like, guys, break out the fucking None notebooks. Better. This guy's the best. I have, you know? a, I have a theory. He's our Muhammad Ali now. I agree. I, I have a theory about him that we've talked about on our phone booth fighting Love podcast. That with Connor, he may be the first UFC fighter in history who would be financially better off yeah. not being a champion when his contract is over. Because Explain. every every champion has a champion's clause. Frank's talked about that. So if you're the champ, you're you automatically extended. extended, right? Yes. Connor would love to be a free agent right now. Like right He'd now. He'd make more money without the UFC. He, he, cor correct. He could put on a show at, at uh, Madison Square Garden. He could put a show in Ireland. And or just fight do Floyd, do that, but not yeah, have to cut the UFC Jesus. in. Not have to cut the UFC. So imagine this. This is the issue, though. If Connor went off on his own and did his own promotion, I agree he'd make more money in the short term yeah. long term if he's just beaten right who's he gonna right. fight no that's what it says so in the long term it might not matter no, but, i don't know man you know what he could do and just on your to yeah. work just think about you. it even when he lost to nate diaz Still it didn't do strong. one i owed a damage nate was so much bigger though what's that but nate was so much bigger if he got starched by aldo we're not having this conversation like people gave him even i i gave him a pass i'm like all right he's yeah. basically a 145 er fighting this monster shit happened and we so we gave him a pass but if you were to lose to a 55 or 45-er, that goes out the window. But so what he did, but, so? but the long-term plan is to stay with the UFC, even if he leaves and comes back to it. So my thought is that if he didn't, because most of the time a UFC fighter wants to have a championship belt, any other scenario they would want that in terms of leverage over the organization. If he, let's say, is not a champion, so let's say he can unload this lightweight belt, he's still fighting uh, outside of his weight class, uh, breaking uh, pay-per-view numbers, fighting guys like Nate Diaz. Sure. So he's making all the money doing that without the belts. The belts are actually a little bit of an anchor in terms of becoming a free agent. He becomes a free agent. And he says, okay, UFC, make me an offer. I got this Floyd money waiting over here. Even if I'm going to go get my ass kicked, it's a one-off. And Floyd wants to give me the money to do it. So maybe I go do that. But guess what? If I'm not with the UFC when I do it, 
UFC doesn't get cut in on that deal. I, Conor McGregor, just go make all the, the boxing payoff money. Then I come back to the UFC. Yeah, I like the idea. The thing is, is before his uh, Jose Aldo fight, he signed a huge extension. Yes. That's the issue. But how many fights? That And I don't know anybody That's that knows that That's why the UFC is so good, because they have the best lawyers. Yeah. So it's the same thing like with uh, Anderson Silva. He signed that new six-fight deal. That's just so you're asking. He's not fighting six times. He's not. He's never going to get out of that contract, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. ever. With Conor, they're tying him up so much, especially with that championship clause, champion cl- clause. Right. I, but I want in the contract he can't compete in any other combat sports, mm-hmm. including boxing. Right? right, so he'd have to get the okay from the UFC brass to fight Mayweather, unless he was a free agent. But yes, as long as he's under contract, he has to do that. Which they would take a huge chunk. Yeah, because I think he has so much power, and he's their only star. He's their only. To be honest, he's their only star. If you look at the numbers, yeah, he has the power to go. I know I have that contract. I don't care, man. I'm not doing shit till you give me $100 million. Mm-hmm. He will never get a portion of the, the UFC like he wants, mm-hmm. like an actual control of the business. They're never going to do that. That ain't happening. What they're going to do is pay him like a Floyd Mayweather. You, I think he'll be the first really fighter to get around 50 to $100 million for one fight. Do you think this could happen in terms of getting the equity? Because you're right. I don't think they will ever do that. Have you ever I, met Ari Emanuel? No. Ain't happening. Yeah. So, but what if he did this though? They gave equity. They gave minority shares to celebrities, right? Like Connor, uh, like Conan, uh, Conan O'Brien, Mark and, uh, Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg. Wahlberg. Oh, yeah. What if he were to go to somebody like Conan O'Brien and say, "Sell me some of your shares, and I'll in turn give you, you know, equity in Conor McGregor Inc. or whatever." Yeah. And he does it, and it's like a vanity transaction. So then Conor can claim, even if he's got Days you know a handful of Conan O'Brien shares. I now have a stake in the company. He claims victory, and he does an end around where he doesn't even have to deal with the new owners. The UFC is going to release their statement and be like, yeah, he bought fucking eight shares off Conan O'Brien. Do, do they want to do that, though? Piss him off? Because, like you're saying, he's so powerful. He, so or just let him have his Con- little Connor's powerful moral they, victory. They need him. Yeah. But Ari Emanuel is way more powerful in the real world. Yeah. Like, Connor's yeah. powerful in his fight world. Right, right. Ari Emanuel makes Hollywood, like, the world rotate. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. They're in a tough position with him because he's a guy where I think they're going, how much power do you want to give this guy? Can he? Could he fight Woodley at 70 and beat him? Probably. I don't count anything out. The way he starts <clears throat> fucking uh, Eddie Alvarez, I, whatever. He, the, I'm putting no limitations on the guy. Mm-hmm. So let's so I don't think they're gonna give him that chance to get a third belt. How much power are you gonna give this guy? You're basically just feeding this yeah. monster until he goes, well, I'm out. I'm gonna go do this. Thanks for all the laughs and money. No, I agree. And that's why we were talking a couple it, of it weeks almost ago. almost hurts him. Well, we were talking a couple of weeks ago, Frank and I He's bigger than the show now. When well, when remember when we were talking on the podcast about uh the fact that when they stripped him of the featherweight title, I was telling Frank it, the, the there's a case to be made way more than that for stripping Jose Aldo yes. the interim sense. title because yes. of the two of Aldo and McGregor Aldo's the guy who said I'm retired screw this I yes. hate you guys I'm, I'm leaving go play soccer right so what you do is you you leave the belt on Connor you strip Aldo of the interim title and then you would have uh, Pettis and Holloway, Holloway fight for that however. My guess is, since we're you know theorizing Which, it that makes they sense went, it keeps Max Holloway. I right. agree. It but has Connor in the conversation now? Why would you not want Connor in every conversation when it comes to the UFC? Unless I agree, they, but unless Connor's they, never fighting at forty five. Well, and also unless they went to Connor and said, "Listen, are you really serious about this equity deal? Because we're about to pull this belt off of you if we're in for a a, a long." All, I think all it is is a, it's you. a pissing contest. It's a dick yeah. game. You know whose dick's bigger? They're like, "Well, check it out. We're going to strip you." the belt and right, right. Like, all right cool man look at my numbers right look at look at my star power they they did something his star power amongst all uh celebrities and athletes and connor it's not even close man it's mm-hmm. not close so to frank's point i think for the first time he is a fighter bigger than the, the organization mm-hmm. and i think the ufc is like fuck we can't let that happen again well we i think can't they, let they, that happen again I think they had that happen back when Tito, back in 2001, 2000. That's fair. Tito was bigger than what the UFC was. The sport was at that time. wasn't big at the time. Right. No, I understand. But I think that that Relatively point, speaking, they yeah. realized that if you ever look at it, they never would put guy. Even now, you know, the UFC, when they do the fights, the, the, the whatever, the, the nomenclature, the, the name on it, uh, you know, uh, UFC, UFC wants to yeah, bad yeah. blood or, yeah, or yeah. UFC, the rising or whatever yeah, yeah. the different name. They never put guys, the, the, the name. They never wanted to make 
the fighter bigger than the show. I think they've always had that kind of uh, business model that will look, the UFC standalone is what people come to. The, the fighters, the brand, the, the, the fighters are secondary. And now they've created a monster in Connor where it's like, that ain't the case anymore. Connor's bigger than the UFC. <sighs> yeah, I, I think he's bigger than the UFC. I, I think I think the UFC's in a little bit of a, a situation where you know, like the December thirtieth card is it's big, but it won't be anywhere near the numbers Connor does. Yeah. But well, they, it was they, slowing they, down. The UFC numbers in 2013, yes. 2014 were plateauing out. Like, I mean, it was everybody's talking about it. They weren't doing what they're doing now, and it's Connor. I mean, he re injected life into the UFC. I mean, even Ronda wasn't doing for UFC what Connor's done for you. But UFC. And, but then when you listen to Dana do interviews, he goes, Ronda's the biggest star we've ever had. And Connor and Brock Lesnar are going, Excuse me? But th that's the same guy that also told you that the organization show. wasn't for sale. And then three days later, and fucking, we have new bosses. You know? True. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. I mean, you have a new boss. <laughs> yeah, I have a new boss. <laughs> you have a new boss. <laughs> I'm, still deny I'm still denying those rumors, by the way. I'm denying that there is going to be a sale. Because I was assured there wouldn't be. So <laughs> right, I, yeah. I actually you do not. To I do not. It. I'm not certain that like there Donald has Trump's. Been a sale. You're the guy that goes. Donald Trump's not my president. No, you live in America. He's your president. <laughs> no, man. I hate to be shitty about it. Didn't happen. <laughs> you know, it didn't happen. <laughs> Never happened. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, that being said, like you know, Dana says things that have to be said. Not he's a promoter. He's yeah. A, he's a Dana is a celebrity. He's yeah. a celebrity. He's a showman. He's a celebrity. Yeah. So I mean, the fact that he says Ronda's a bigger seller than you know. But it's weird. It's almost like a Donald Trump because if I'm Connor or anyone, I just go, uh, go to ConorMcGregorFactCheck.com, just like Hillary did. You're like, no, look at the facts. Like, I have actual facts. That's not true, man. Yeah. But yeah. I when mean, Dana it, says something, it carries a lot of weight. Yeah. It, not as yeah. much as it used to. But it, I mean, just, just the fact that Connor goes to Madison Square Garden and outsells Mike Tyson fights. What the I fuck? Mean, we're now, I mean, before I used to always say boxing's bigger than you know uh, UFC. Now it's like for a while now it seems like you know we've the ch tides have changed where you know we're doing better, but we've never had like a Mayweather Pacquiao type fight. No. But now we have him. You know, it's like well, well, shit. We have Connor. I mean, there's a reason why Mayweather wants to make the fight. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I mean, and, think about it. And Mayweather Canelo. says. Yeah. This, <clears throat> and Canelo. Oh, and Canelo now. Oscar I mean, De La Hoya is like, Let, let's do it, man. Canelo's open for the fight. It's like, boy, you boys are super thirsty. I mean, who would have thought that five years ago that a Mayweather, a Canelo, any top tier franchise, you know, I mean, you know, named boxer will be asking to fight a UFC fighter? They wouldn't even address it. Remember yeah. in the media, they wouldn't be like, what? MMA? Uh, what? Wrestling? Yeah. Just what two years ago maybe less than that two years ago they asked you know remember there's this debate i think because of dana he goes ronda could beat up floyd mayweather yeah right. and floyd was doing a scrum and they go what do you think of the comments about um uh them saying ronda could be beat you up and in all honesty floyd goes who and like Ron, the female champion goes mm -hmm. i i don't know what you're talking about i, mm -hmm. I don't think so i don't, i don't know what the fuck you're and talking he about he had the other comment too where he said i'm four and oh against women I don't know where you're getting. <laughs> <laughs> How dare I'm undefeated. Yeah. I'm undefeated yeah. against these females. Yeah. <laughs> That's super fucked up. But yeah, no. for sure. That was pretty dark, man. That was good. Yeah, that Thank was you. super dark, but he is undefeated. <laughs> it's true. He is, man. Yeah, he will hit a girl. Um <laughs> he will now that I think it Floyd man with a hit a girl. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He won't where be where, this where are you at, Frank, with the UFC? Because you you had because I saw some rumblings. I didn't want to hit you up. I'm sure everyone was hitting you up. Usually I just text you, but I saw how you asked for a release from the UFC because yeah. you, you you sought to suspend you, correct? Right. Well, UFC suspended me. Okay. If you explain. Usada. Well, basically, USADA is not an athletic <laughs> commission, so no. like uh, UFC is basically who I'm suspended by. If right now you go under the commissions, you know, uh, I don't have a suspension by so commission. So you could fight in California, Nevada, wherever. Yeah, I have no suspension by a commission. So, and because, <clears throat> you know, I, I want to go into more detail about it, but uh, Malky and the lawyer are like, eh, hold off right now. That's fair. Because of some of the testing, and the like, sure. Tokyo lab has been shown to be inadequate. And, you know, it's like, well, I have a case now. I'm like, ah, we'll, we'll slow down. And we're going to build up and our different areas it's like well you know this isn't even like a legitimate thing it's 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 such a uh you can see a fallacy in this procedure i'm like well <laughs> easiest way to do it is just let me just jump the system you know let me just get out of it and go compete i mean i'm 37 I don't so so if you got out of your ufc contract you could go sign with bellator anyone mm -hmm. compete wherever you want yep 
That's interesting. See, wow. the but, fight was but, also in Australia, so there's no <clears throat> state athletic commission. Just like when yes, John USADA. and yeah. like Brock got in trouble when they fought UFC 200, right? Yes, both. So of them. they have to deal with USADA, UFC suspension there. Then they still have to deal with Nevada Athletic Commission because Nevada, right? And you're in Australia, so it's just the UFC. UFC could be like, yeah, we're not spending them in America. Like it, we, he, he can still they fight could. here huh? if, if they decide to say that. Yeah, yeah they could, so much do with but, but when so. You wanted your release just so you could fight. Yeah. It had nothing to do with the actual UF business of the UFC, just because no. they weren't allowing you to fight. Yeah, basically. <clears throat> and you, so you would, and when you asked for your release, what'd they say? You didn't, you didn't hear anything? No. You're too big of a name for them to let you go? I think so. No, no, yeah, no I just told you, brother. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah like, you're a victim of your own success, right? Because they're like, no, why would let him go? He's just going to go to Bellator and be champ in two days. You know, like <laughs> wow. when's their next fight? He'll be champ. So they're basically just holding on. And you're spent for how long by USADA? Until, until uh, April of 2018. Okay, that's a long time. Yeah. That's a long, especially, in, you know, you're not a young chicken. Nope. I'll be 39 when I get back. But you're, but you're, see, this is my thing. I understand business. I understand letting Frank Mayer go is a big deal. You come with a lot of credibility. Just as from human to human, if you call and you and Joe Silva have a history, you and Dana have a history. Mm -hmm. Like I said, in Vegas at the UFC offices, there should be a statue of Frank Mayer. I'm not. I've said this before, but what you've done for the organization, how long you fought, who you fought, the way you've beat guys, how long you've been in this fucking thing, there should be some sort of human to human connection where you go, Joe, listen, brother, I get what you guys are doing. I know you don't want me to go over here. I'm, I'm like getting younger, man. I gotta fight. Like I, I need to make this money, and and if you guys are gonna hold this up, you gotta let me go, man. Yeah. Like when? Well, where, I mean, verbatim, where's that come into play? Uh, I don't know. I've, I've you know what to... I'm saying? Like, well, because how much? Because if you guys be just... right before I got uh, inducted into the Nevada Hall of Fame, right? I'm the only UFC fighter to make it. You know, there are Mike Tyson, Andre Agassi. There you go. You know, I'm in there with that group. Yeah, I don't see Andre and, Agassi. Uh, yeah. So about two weeks before. I, I had already called Dana and Lorenzo trying to, you know, get a face to face and conversation, never got a return call. So then I'm like, oh, so then I called the, you know, the office. I, you know, I called Reed trying to get a hold of Dana. I'm like, all right, well, here's a good excuse. Like, you're going to have to talk to me. Coming right? to the Hall of Fame for God's Coming sake. to the Hall of Fame. You guys aren't going to be there. So uh, they, I even was in like, oh, I'll make it to where, you know, Dana, why don't you introduce me to the Hall of Fame? Because this is kind of a, a group venture. Groundbreaking. UFC, and then wouldn't it be better to have the guy who represents the UFC? I'm the first fighter. So I thought, I mean, it was a good idea on all levels outside of even the fact. Great of, uh, marketing on their yeah, take. Yeah, you would think, right? So uh, I got a phone call back, not from Dana again, but being told that, no, no, he's going to be out of town that weekend. I'm like, you guys know what I've been going to the Hall of Fame for like four or five months. You called me in the office, videotaped my reaction to it. You guys have business that day? It's not like it's on a fight card. Like, what, what, what happened here? Even one of the Fertitas, like Lorenzo, would show up. Nope. It was in Vegas. Didn't get any of them. See, th <laughs> and th this is, mm, man, that bums me out. <laughs> this is the problem because that, that's where an ego comes into play because what you've given up for that organization and for the heavyweight division, you're in the Hall of Fame, man. Name the next guy who's going to the Nevada State Hall of Fame. Go. Fucking go. Name a fighter. No, not from the None, back. man. From Vegas. You know, what yeah. are we talking about here? Yeah. So for them just to eat, granted, you, with your testing in Australia, whatever, okay, who gives a fuck, man? Yeah. But to me, I just feel like at some point, you just have to have a face-to-face -face conversation, which you've been trying to get, but it's not happening. Well, and then, that bumps me And up. then I kind of thought, well, maybe because of the sale happened, and I, you know, obviously I wasn't privy to that knowledge. But, uh, you know, and now they're doing restructuring. They're firing people here and there. So, I don't know. Maybe here at the first of the year I can get a conversation with Ari and sit in there with them. And that's fine. It's going to be very business because they don't know Frank Mayer like a Dana White or Joe Silva does. Yeah. That's the that issue. might actually because work to my advantage. History. I don't know. It might. Maybe it's where they don't even give a shit about me. I mean, that actually might work out in my benefit to where they're like, who the fuck are you? And then cut me. That's a good point. I actually, yeah, because when we were talking about it, I said, you know, the, the first thing I know is from years of working in radio where like, you know, a, a, a company gets bought, new ownership comes in. They just look at, at numbers on paper. It's a, it's a number game. Yeah. And they don't know the, the, the intangibles. They don't know the value that somebody has, the history, nothing like that. And the Which first is thing, a problem. Yeah. And the first thing they may look at is the number next to Frank's name. And the number of months it's been since he has come to work, essentially, and say, why do we have this done? You know, and to, that may work to his benefit. But I, I'm assuming they're not cutting any fighters without Dan, like Dan's gonna have to see right. the list. Right. That's the only. Well, I mean, they just you cut you know ambassadors. 
Matt Hughes, Chuck Liddell. I mean, that's understandable. Yeah. <laughs> like, let's be real. Like, if you're going to do budget cuts, you're like, I'm, I'm sorry. Why is Chuck making? And I love Chuck. Yeah. I just went to dinner with him a few months. I love Chuck. It's no. But if you're doing budget cuts as a financial businessman yeah. and you're going, I'm sorry. What's what's Chuck doing? Like he, well, he's in Malibu, but he, we like call him for stuff. Like yeah, yeah. well, he's making a lot of money. We have to let him go. You know, we're gonna have to let. I know he's your buddy. We're gonna have to let him go. Your situation is a little different. Let's say in a perfect world, you sit down with Ari uh, Emanuel, and he goes, "All right, Frank. Yeah, I don't want to see you. Just sit on the shelf, man. Go do what you want to do. What would you do? No, oh, well." I probably had the conversation. Have you ever thought about that? Yeah, actually. Well, I thought maybe too to do a win-win for both people. It's like, I'll keep my UFC contract, you know, uh, but let me go, you know, I'm going to go overseas and fight. Lots of fights over, you know. What do you mean the- go? So you, you'll just go over and fight under the UFC banner and like... The Philippines or Japan, Russia, or, but under, but still for the UFC. Well, it'd be Frank Mir, but I mean, I don't know if they want me to put my the moniker on it, but I wouldn't be going to like a, a direct competitor. So Not, you say, let me go, but I won't mm, fight for Bellator, Bellator or, or World Series of Fighting. Yeah, you know, so that was an idea that I had. You know, it was like, all right, well, you know, yeah. you know how promoters would handle this in the old pro wrestling days. You would go over there, but instead of being Frank Mir, you would wear like a mask. He'd be like Hulk Hogan when he when he went dark. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I gotta get a beer. I don't want to see that, Frank. I, <laughs> uh, because the the thing what I like, God, we're just I mean we're out in Looney World right now, but Fedor's with Bellator, Fedor uh, uh, yeah. and fucking Frank. You yeah. on let's on live TV? Are you kidding me? Think of the ratings on that. Yeah. Think of the fucking ratings on that. Well, I mean, and, Matt's and, fighting him next, but it's Fedor. Even if Matt starts him, whatever happens there, tough fight for Matt. Matt's my boy, tough fight. Whatever happens there, but that that Fedor name carries something still. Oh yeah, and if you if you had the opportunity to do it, you would become immediately the biggest name free agent by a mile that they could possibly put with with Fedor. Oh, uh, not even yeah, yeah not, even, not close. even close, not even close. And then this to your back to your original point, that's probably the insurance policy of keeping them right there. Yep, it's the same thing. Yeah, you you fucked up. You got too successful, man. You did too much work. Yeah. Um, so I don't know well, I guess when I turn thirty nine, I'll be fighting again. <laughs> <laughs> look forward to that. <laughs> you know, a lot of lot of podcasting to do lot, between now and it's then. Good for yeah, you, yeah, right? That's, right. that's why, though. I mean, honestly, I, I didn't think I was even allowed to do grappling competitions. And then I see John and them do grappling. For I'm sure, like, you are. I'm like, wait a minute, we can do, we can grapple too. Like, we oh can yeah, do, I I'd even at, at the time, especially I was ranked, I think 12, 12 or a thirteenth in the world. I didn't even ask him to do metal. I was the first UFC fighter to ever do so, like Meta Morris. I didn't even ask him. Just I, did just, it. I just did it. And then, so how does that work? And they were like, hey, man. I was like, ah, it's tomorrow. I'm sorry. And then they're like, from now on, you got to talk to us. Oh, they do want you to ask them? Yeah, they're just like, yeah, we'd like approval. But in your situation, I'm sure you can just grab to your fucking yeah. nuts fall off. Yeah, so starting next year, I'm going to start doing that more. Are you, you, and where would you, would you do something like uh, Chael's? Like, did you see? So, Chael did the, uh, yeah, the submission, submission underground. underground. Yeah. So he had he had uh, John Jones and Dan Henderson and Misha Tate and just got uh, eye on there. Would you do something like that, or would you do more like Eddie Bravo? Have you seen his rules? Yeah, and I've been down there too. Both. I pretty much at that point would just pick competitions to go to compete. One to keep my edge again, uh, you know, be competitive, and then two, just it's a way to make you know uh, make a means why you know why I'm not fighting. So I mean, you know, financial would be a, a driven factor. I like it, man. It, and it, it actually, w- with you competing, it helped the podcast too because you talk about oh, yeah. all that stuff and the yeah. the training and stuff like that. And you'd be obviously a nightmare for guys to deal with. Well, our you know one of our most listened to episodes was the day that the whole USADA thing happened. For sure, because Frank called me and told me you know what what had happened, the report he was getting back, and all this kind of stuff. Nobody knew about it yet. And I said, well, I remember because I was driving out to the. <laughs> driving out to the brothel i turned around came back i said oh, we gotta so, get to that after yeah. this by so the way. i said uh, he just I, sent me a text i don't mean to interrupt yeah. he sent me a text he goes hey man it, he said brothel i'm like the fuck is he talking about and then he was like yeah you don't know my other side gig i'm like sure didn't i sure <laughs> as fuck didn't i said you're a radio comedian host that with frank i didn't right. know you did that no nope. but keep Day going job. Yeah, yeah, yeah so so i was i was headed out to the the, the brothel out in the desert and he he calls me so you know I, I said well here's what i think what i do i said let me turn around right now i'm gonna come over to your house we're gonna set the recorder in the middle of the table and you and i are just gonna smart talk man. about this smart man. until you've said everything you can think of to say about it and we did and it lasted i mean it's probably a two-hour episode 
episode, just the two of us talking, and it is a completely unedited piece of audio. It has to right? be. Yeah, I mean, no no cuts, nothing. And I told him that ahead of time. I said, look, you know, I'm going to roll on this, and, and there's nothing's off limit. I'm going to think of every question to ask you. And then, uh, I mean, it was it was highs and lows. There was laughing, crying, you know, there was everything that in That's it. That's brilliant on your part, and yeah. good for you, Frank, because it, it takes balls to do that. We, we've had those moments on this show where I've lost a fight or the Reebok deal, and when I decide to retire – we do it on here yeah. because we've had, you know, these other major shows ask us to do it there. But let's say someone gives you, all right, you have three minutes, Frank, and then you're going to be with this tool with an airpiece who's going to just basically ask you these three questions. Mm-hmm. You got to state your case in the, in these three minutes. It's like, fuck, it's way more complex than that. And then also there's a backstory mm-hmm. and then there's this story. I need 40 minutes of airtime. Like, well, that's not our show, man. And then and that's why podcasting is going. Whoop. Yeah. Well, and then what he was able to do was when all those people did call for the interview, just tell them all, hey, go to phoneboothfighting.com. Correct. Pull, you're, you're welcome to use the audio. Pull, you know, use. Because that's use, investing yeah. in, in your business yeah. and yourself. But it's him in his own words. Isn't that it great? Way too, yeah. Isn't it great? And, but you, Frank, you can't talk about exactly what happened, right? Like, because you, did you, I don't know if you guys, did you hear John Jones on Joe Rogan? We talking yes. about the tainted supplements yep. and all that stuff, and you're, it's, and I think John is pound for pound the greatest fighter ever enter the octagon. He, he's he's my favorite to watch. Blah blah blah. But I I watch that. I'm like I don't buy it, man. I don't buy it for well, whatever I mean, reason. That's why I didn't, <clears throat> we went back and, and in fact they're still testing different supplements that I've taken and stuff. And uh, you're with sorry to interrupt you. You're with Malky, yeah, who's John Jones' agent right. as well. There you go. So they're still testing through this stuff. That's why I don't try to make something up. I'm not trying to sit there and go, well, I took something, a supplement that was tainted. Like when I came about that they found this uh, metabolite that could be the derivative of a, of a compound that I could have taken. Um, my thing is I don't know how it got there. You know what I mean? Like they keep sitting there going, well, what do you want me to say? Yeah, like, like I, I, can, I, I could make up some crazy story yeah, if you I mean, want. Like, you know, I mean, I wish I could point to a supplement and go, well, it was that and just give me time served. But that's just not the case. You know what I mean? Like I don't have an answer for you on where this metabolite in my system came from, except for it's like, you know, I always keep pointing back to just just the logical, it's like, it's kind of like evidence in a court case. We can present evidence, but then there's also the human factor where we talk about motive. I'm like, guys, you know that I got paid the same whether I won or lost against Mark Coleman yes. or Mark uh, Hunt. I wish it was Mark Coleman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so no, no, no uh, uh, incentive there. Sure. Um, he was ranked ninth, I was ranked 10th. None of them was getting a title shot right afterwards. Mm -hmm. No incentive there. Um, Whatever I took, obviously, if I was trying to take something to alter how I looked, I didn't look any different. You know what I mean? I didn't perform any different. So that's why I keep pointing out to things. And then when they they sat there, like, well, you came and randomly drug tested me, you know, six weeks before. Yeah. Nothing there. No. We were having this conversation at my kitchen table. I'm like, so when would I have taken this stuff? That was my That's thing. I was like, point, so I was like, yeah. when did I take it? You know, like, well, you could have taken it directly after that because it can metabolize and, you know, it takes six weeks to get out of your system. I'm like, and so when you found this in my system, it's at low levels. Yes. So I took a drug for a couple of days after you guys tested me thinking I could get away with it. Yeah. I'm all, but a cool Google search will show that this could still be in my system. Yep. W- w- do I come off as a stupid person? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I mean, it wasn't like this. And you know, a, it's random. Like, every yeah, fighter knows. They could come back four they five days came later. Back, they could come back that night. They could come back Absolutely. that morning. And the other thing, too, is like, it's like it's a brand new drug where someone told me, like, hey, you know, this is just out of, you know, such and such Olympic, you know, guys are using this. It's a it's ahead of the spectrum. It's not like a designer drug. Yeah, you, no one can test for it. I'm like, this drug was invented in the 1950s. It's like, Fucking been around, man. Been around, man. man. You know, it, 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 it's ran its uh, course, you know. So, again, like, I'm looking at it like, well, we don't know. I'm like, but that was the thing that kind of came frustrating. That work for me. USADA is yeah. not in the business of trying to help us as fighters. They're in the business of just catching fighters to justify their existence. By any means necessary. By any means necessary. And it, it's almost a, I'm, I'm, I like that they're cleaning up the sport, but it's almost a hindrance. No, it's like You see a lot of stuff, you're like, dude, come on, man. You're going to spend of, BJ Penn. He can't fight because he took a fucking IV bag. Mm-hmm. Like, where? How? Uh, how well, far are you guys means, gonna go? I mean, and a lot Tim of things, means. Yeah, there yeah, you go. I mean, there's there's things coming up to where it's like, well, well, shit. You guys are like, really, it's like kind of guilty till proven innocent type mentality. Here. Oh, hundred percent. And then, is it really for the betterment of the fighter? I mean, are you really like, what is the purpose? Are you really protecting us? Because so far, I mean, Brock Lesnar failed several drug tests leading up to his fight. 
Ask Mark Hunt how that went for him. Yeah. You Thanks, know. USADA. Yeah, I mean, good job, man. I mean, and you didn't even put him in the testing pool. So I'm like, nothing. I thought you guys were here for the safety of the fighters. Oh, no, no. You're in the business of trying to catch people just to justify your own existence. Because, I mean, if everybody was clean, they wouldn't have a business model. All those guys that draw a paycheck from USADA, where do they go? It isn't like it's the commission where no matter what, the commission is there for not only drug testing, but also the protection of fighters Correct. on all different levels, financially even, you know, physical health, you know, the well-being of a fighter in its totality. So that it's not like they're just, they're not out just to bust you for any means necessary and for the, drug use. And this is a perfect segue into this. And I, I definitely want to get your guys' opinion on this because you're both so educated on the, the sport and, and where the, the state of the sport right now. If there was an association union, whichever one you like, I don't think USADA's on board. I don't think, because no. you, you look at the NFL. Do you know MLB, USADA can't even work in the NFL? Do you know the NFL won't allow USADA to be part of it? Because because USADA, like right now I ask questions and I'm like, well, how did you do we, We're not going to tell you. Well, what about? What, they what, don't what, have to. We don't have to do shit. You have no rights. Well, who do, who do they work for though, Frank? Right. They the, there there's a subcontractor of the UFC. No, they're but I'm saying as though, the, the, but because they don't have to forego any information, they yes. don't have to explain themselves because they're not. It's not a state sanctioned right. or anything. So the players' union looked at that and was like, "You can't come in the NFL. No, no. why would we you? We can't do that to our guys. You have to explain what you're doing. If you're going to do something, it has to be thought out from A to Z. It can't just be well." Prove me wrong. Okay, and, and, well, but this is a difference because the 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 NFL players are union. They're going. We have Tom Brady. We have name a superstar, Aaron Rodgers. We have these superstars where you're you're talking hundreds of millions of dollars in in sponsors, everything. They're the Tom Brady's the face of America. If you're gonna flag him for a metabolite like you did Frank Mayer, we're not having that. Because he be, probably didn't no. do anything. And then you're gonna drag his name through the mud, suspend him for this time, and then it comes out he actually didn't do it. We can't have that. Another because we give a we care about his image, our league. We can't have this. Another thing solid. that I think this whole thing sort of brought to light, you and a handful of the other cases too, is that you know before I knew any fighters, was around fighters, that sort of thing, I had this idea that when you're training for a fight, that there's like a chemist and a nutritionist standing over you 24-7, you know, like a beef eater, yeah, like yeah. looking at everything you eat before you yeah, ingest you'd be, it. you'd be cracked. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> right. yeah, it depends what camp you go to. Well, yeah, but I mean, that, that even at the lowest level, that sure. that would not even take into account how much all that would cost yeah. and that sort of thing. So the reality becomes you realize that, no, a lot of times it's like everybody else's everyday life. I mean, you're going to a restaurant maybe, but you're not, excuse me, before I order this where did this beef come from where did you know you're not looking into all no, that kind of but, stuff. but you're fact, also not getting paid where you could afford that no. totally. there, there, there's well, less than five percent because you look at a guy like bill romanowski this is an extreme he had a the chemistry you speak of he had a nutritionist dietitian he had a sleep expert he had a mental guy they're 24 7 a team basically it's like the lance armstrong team yeah. around him because he was getting paid $30, $40 million a year where he could afford that. UFC fighters can't afford that. Yeah. You just can't no. to look into everything. In fact, to his point where people sit there and go, well, come on, man, who doesn't think that way? Because but at least it happened before the first drug test, so that's why I didn't flag it as a system to be tested. But we were working out at the gym, yeah. and they have – uh, another company that shares the gym with us. What and gym is this? Uh, where Ricky Lindell was up by Real Water, okay. right? And so they were doing something in the sauna and they were using the sauna to do some kind of cleansing for the people. I had a little bit of a cold. So I sit there and one of the girls goes, oh, here, it's some electrolytes. So I, I grabbed it. I grabbed the bottle and I look at it and it's FDA, you know, or not FDA, but, you know, just look at it like, eh, it just says salt and, you know, magnesium. Yeah, whatever. I put it in my mouth, you know, no problem. <laughs> that bitch is drinking Winstraw. <laughs> but I mean... But Shredded. according to USADA's mentality is that I'm automatically responsible for I'm like yeah. I mean I read the bottle, but but now knowing what I've now that I've ran into this nightmare going back, that doesn't mean shit. No, I, it doesn't I, mean anything. Like you're still you can read the bottle and look at it and go, There's nothing wrong in this bottle. Yeah, there is. Because the I, FDA does not regulate uh the supplement company. Yeah. So anything could be in there. Fuck, you don't know. And guess what? If you get busted, you get busted. And it's your fault for putting your body. I'm like, and your career screwed. What the fuck? Really? Yeah, I mean, there's a difference between a guy who accidentally becomes tainted by something. And you can look at levels in my body and see that, okay, we find a fucking metabolite. 
But let's look at the rest of the numbers. Yeah, look that, at my fucking blood lot. profile. There's you a, have my you blood drew me. Look at my whole profile. I mean, I give them the benefit of the yeah, doubt. I mean, is what I'm saying. You see athletes. a guy who's jacked up. I mean, there's obviously. I bet you, if you get a guy who's on drugs. He's going to, it's not going to just be a fucking metabolite in a system. It's very You're going to be able to pull blood from him and go, holy shit, man. You have the growth hormone, testosterone of a fucking 18 year old. Yes. How the fuck is that, man? You know, yeah. like, oh, I don't know. Then you know? I get it. Yeah. Then, it's like, then well, if the metabolite and you have a fucking flies. metabolite in yes. your system, it's like, okay. <laughs> yes. You know, that's enough of a building of a case. But when you're like, well, you're fucking pretty much low at everything. And we have this metabolite. It's like, well, guilty when, when the we three were, years sir. man i know when we were in the gym that day too so i saw that frank laughs about it now because it's like i saw that i was all the way across the gym i was like packing up my bag or whatever and i see it across the gym you know because i can hear it's not that big of a room and he's like oh yeah i got a cold you know she's like here and he's like oh and it was like slow motion we're you like let him do it no! oh, boom slap her yeah, yeah. 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 but honestly yeah. at the time i mean like if you read the label that's all you have to do no right? but For sure but i think that gets back to what a lot of people i think a lot of people think what i naively na naively thought which is what i was saying before i knew any of this is that oh no that something like that doesn't happen because these guys are you know triple checking everything well every the problem is the guys you know? go ah oh, what the fuck man like i think it was over he's like I ate a horse burger. And like, well, sir, your traps are coming from your ear to here. Yeah, right. He's like, I eat ho a lot of horse. It's yeah. like, well, that's the problem. Is you have some athletes go, well, all I did is drink this Gatorade from oh, this. If you look the at my stripper gave picture, me a Gatorade. Yeah. When I fought Mark Hunt, I don't think I think that's a strong case that I wasn't on drugs. You have a good case, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I can win the Olympia, all right? Yeah, You're not shredded. I didn't look like Arnold, you know what I mean? <laughs> I wish you did, because then I could just be like, well, excuse me, sir, you're yeah, shredded. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if I, it was like I had a six-pack of 265. Yeah, I wish really, you did. <laughs> be great. Um, but where do you guys stand on the whole, and I'm, I'm sure you guys see it, with the whole MMA association, and then you see the union stuff? Where do you guys see how it's going to work, man? I, I just, Meaning, like, you don't think you don't think there, we, there should be one, or you just don't think it's capable? It would be nice if the fighters collectively had more representation for rules. I think, like, and he'll explain in better detail, um, I think our energy should be better leveraged if we were trying to enforce the Muhammad Ali Act. That's where we really should be putting our time and energy in us as fighters. Having a union, it makes sense in other sports like football, baseball, because you have different teams. Do you know what I mean? Like, you have a whole team, you know, and With owners. And owners. And you have and each UFC owner's Bellator, like its own individual Even if you promoter. want to count UFC, Bellator, and World Series of Fighting as a three, name another one after that like i mean it, it drops off pretty quickly you know what i mean in the u.s and i mean the ufc is probably 90 percent of the market mm. you know especially for pay-per-view and it's like you have one boss it's like you have one company that kind of overruns the whole thing again as far as us being in a union like i don't know i mean maybe if someone wants to sit down and explain it to me better i just don't see it being anything besides it's just kind of like running in mud. You know what I mean? It's like, ah, oh, we're turning on our wheels. I don't see this going anywhere. But if you want to use a lot of attention and a lot of energy towards going towards something, it seems like the Muhammad Ali Act, from the little bit I understand of that, would be of much more use to us as fighters. Are you familiar with the Muhammad Ali Act? Yeah. Do you want to explain a little bit yeah, of that? Yeah, so what it does, not... not I have my thoughts on yeah, this. Yeah, and, and not unlike, uh, you know, here in, in L.A., in Hollywood, you know, the special rules that keep managers from being agents and there's a lot of things that separate conflicts of interest the ali act would do the same thing for mixed martial arts correct and i think that that type of government there, see i'm there's two things i'm a big fan of number one government regulation and number two labor unions just as a general principle mm -hmm. i mean i'm i'm that liberal guy but the problem with unionizing at this point is the time to unionize is at the beginning when no one makes any money because everybody's got the same to gain or lose. You're trying to do it at a point where you've got some guys who are having a hard time keeping the lights on and some guys who are legit multimillionaires. Yes. That's the problem now. So the only way it's really going to work is if you have somebody and, you know, I don't know if there's anybody south of Connor. I mean, we had that discussion earlier. But somebody who could, if they literally said, you know what, I don't feel like fighting this year. I, I, I'm a member of this union and I think I'm not going to fight. And it really means something and grinds the the mechanism to a halt i don't know if we're there at this point but government regulation uh could definitely uh tidy with that with the up. ali act it's basically not letting dana di who's the owner promoter mm -hmm. right dictate mm -hmm. the pay scale mm -hmm. correct mm -hmm. that's how it would work yeah to your point where, where a lot, and a lot of people say this well if we could get like connor ronda to team up and do it i disagree with that i think you have to have the masses i mm -hmm. you'd have to have the guy you have to shut a card down 
Correct. Well, for yeah, months. No, no, that, not, not just one fight. Right. I agree with you. And, That's what it would take. It would take because, us shutting because down Because Connor, Connor can do that, and then they're like, all right, well, we can still roll as usual. They can we'll still something. through it. We'll yeah. still, yeah, we'll get through yeah. this. He'll be, hopefully, he just goes away eventually, and we'll, we'll, so there's going to be another guy. But if you have how many fighters on the roster? 500, 400 yeah. now? They're cutting people left and right. Let's say 500. Right. If you get 400 of those guys, just like we're not doing shit till we get something's changed here, you're going to get them to at least address it. Because right now, and my issues with it, is you have the union saying one thing. You have the association saying one thing. Really, they should all want the the, the same general goal, but they're fighting each other. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. they can't even get their shit together. They're fighting each other. So the UFC's like, we're not taking this serious. No, you're we, right. They, they can't even get on the same page. It's two things. It's, it's diminished star power at the top, but then also enough of a core that they would have to look at it and go, we're having a hard time coming up with nine fights, and the pay-per-view is in and these three guys, weeks. And these guys won't do shit yeah. unless we give them this. Yeah. And, and maybe you know they're asking for 50 percent ain't happening but if they just go all right we're giving them eight let's give them 20. at least you get your foot in the door where they they're at least open to changes and a, a lot of people don't talk about this remember how we talked about no how, 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 would open up clarity to that right yes see now that's the reason why another reason why how would be so important right now we're all just kind of pissing in the wind people say eight percent right then other guys you know you got lorenzo saying 53 percent. that'd be who, a lie for who sure. knows but I mean, we know it's not fifty three percent. I mean, I, I hear you. It's I think all it's somewhere over. in the middle. We don't know, but we don't know. So once again, it's like how do I, it'd be like me telling you, hey, I got a guy for you going to fight next weekend. All right, cool. What do you know about him? He could be between five foot ten True. and six foot six. You're like, True. all right, he's either a blue belt or he's up to a black belt. Yeah. You're like, well, Jesus, well, man. what is it, man? What's somewhere in between? How do you prepare for something that you don't even have a gauge on? I agree. You know, so I mean, how do we even have this conversation if we don't even know, like, for the union thing? That's why I'm sitting there like, well, what do you guys want? We don't even fucking know. You don't even know. They don't know. We don't know. They don't know. This. They, they, what they do know, both of them know, that things have to get better. I think the leaders, are, and you have Bjorn on one side, which, and then you have the, the union guy on the other, they're in it for different motives. But the, the fighters are the ones you got to care about. And if the fighters get together as a team, and, and I used Cowboy on yesterday's show as an example. Good friend of mine, love Cowboy. Known him forever. Cowboy came out and was like, I'm part of the MMA Association. We need some changes. We need health care. We need this. Cowboy's a star power. Well, if, if you don't have all your shit together, if you're not down for the cause, Dana went, Cowboy, let me talk to you real mm. quick. Boom, Cowboy's out. All right, man. Could be Because you're, if you're not solid as a unit, mm-hmm. you guys are going to get picked off. Like Lions for Hunt and Gazelle. They don't fuck with the, the group. They, they get the weak ones. And I'm not saying Cowboy's weak. I'm just saying Cowboy has a lot more to lose than these other guys up there that were saying it. So Dana went, you want to do that? Let me talk to you real quick. And I'm not saying he told him, don't be part of it. He's just saying, listen, you have this going for you, you have this going. Be, and he's going, you have Bjorn speaking on your behalf? Let me tell you something about Bjorn. And Dana's right with that. And he's just going, you really want to be part of this? And Cowboy goes, fuck, I never thought about that. Mm-hmm. So before you launch a union association, you better have all your fucking ducks in a row. Because right now people are just picking it apart. And fighters are jumping off well, these I mean, ships. It's just the basics of the art of war, right? Yes. You got to know yourself. Yes. And then you got to know your enemy, right? And in this case, we have neither one. We don't know ourselves because we don't have a, a unified voice. It's all over the place. And we don't even know what's you going on. You don't know the side. demon you're fighting. We don't even know you, what's you going know, on. So, you know, I mean, that's the worst fight you could be in. It's like, well, we're all fighting with each other. We're fighting in the dark. And we don't mm-hmm. even fucking know who we're going to be fighting. It's like, I don't know. How big is he? Fuck. No, it's like we're fighting in the dark. We're like, are you are you part of the association? Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Where's he at? It's yeah. literally like, well, and, and that's and, why it's like, it's like, let's just focus on one thing first. But the, the first step that I would do is the union and the association need to get together and because and, they want yeah. the same thing. The fighters, are, I, I don't know about the heads of those. The fighters want the same thing. Get those together because then you have a group that want to make a change. But if these two are fighting, you're fighting the same war, but you have different motives. Also, the reason you can't compare this to, to a team sport is because there are no teams. So in say the NFL, you get all the NFL teams, each individual owner is like his own promoter. Correct. The UFC only has one promoter. So this is as though every single player played for the 49ers well, I, and it's just inter, and, and uh, to, intramural squad or whatever. Yeah, right? going back to what we were saying, it's like we have a roster of 500. You have a football team. You only have a roster, what is it, 58 guys? Uh, 53. 53. 53 guys on a football team. 20 of those guys say, fuck you. Team's in trouble. You know what I mean? Yeah, like trouble. You know what I mean? Only takes 20, 25 guys. Right. It's, 
holy shit, now we got guys playing Iron Man football again at the pro level? Like, yeah. holy shit, well, do you think Tom can cover someone in the fucking yeah. plots? You know, like, you know, like, you can make an effect with less guys. But, but also yep. the reason see, that's the reason why unions work in those other sports, though, is what I'm saying is that because all those owners, I mean, they, they want to keep the league going, but they're also competing against each other. So you've got a level of competition that doesn't occur in the UFC. There's only, you know, one. I mean, there's several owners, but there's basically only one ownership group. One yeah, but, but, you, but you, can, you can use it to your point how, all right, if you take the, the NFL – and just take out all whatever the thirty-two teams right. you have. You have one team. You can use that as a platform, as a sure. blueprint. Just because, so it's like there's thirty-two UFCs, but there's just one. You know what I'm saying? So they're still getting the benefits, and you can because all the all those guys are taking care. Four one k guys, yeah. and they have so much more leverage because even if one team, again, twenty-five guys could affect the economy of a city. Could you imagine if? 30 of the fucking Dallas Cowboys decided not to go to work on Sunday. You, you don't, you, you, you five. If, right. If, if the uh, right five. Or the right if five. Dax, uh, if Dax, if uh, Elliot and the starting line were like, we're not doing this shit. So, yeah. So I mean, seven guys. They're you fun. have a stadium of 80,000 people that bought tickets. All the people that Refund supports. That money. You know what I mean? Like all the vendors that were out there, t shirt sales. I mean, you can greatly affect the economy of a whole city. By one team, you know, and that's something we don't have. It's true. We don't have that. It's and a complicated situation. That's again, situation, where it's like, man. you know, it's like, guys, man, we just don't, I don't see where the power is. Like anytime I get into a fight with someone, I'm like, where do I have power? We, we see weaknesses. Where's my leverage? Yeah, where, where am I going to attack at? And I'm like, I'm sitting there going, guys, I feel like we're fucking throwing paper planes at a fucking tank. Like, it's like, you know, first of all, why don't you tell me who's inside the tank? Let's start there at least. You know what I mean? That's why I keep going back to the Muhammad Ali act. Like, let's let's find out what we're facing. Like, who knows? Maybe, you know, the percentage is 30%. You know, I don't know. But until we start getting numbers out, then you can get people on your side and you can get a community. And then social media, we can, you know, hey, man, the fighters only make, you know, 15% off of a fucking fight. You're like, really? Wow. And we can actually show proof for it. Then it would actually create some kind of movement. The, the, right now, you have, yeah. you have too much... Like the Dana says years. this, Bajoran says this, you know, it's like, well, who the fuck's right? We don't know. The, the other thing is too, and I, I tried to make it clear on our last show when I was talking about this, Dana's not at fault for this. <laughs> if, if I own a business, I'm like, yeah, get you guys shit together and bring it to us and let's figure it out. But his job was to make the UFC as profitable as possible, which he did, so, sold for $4 billion. His job is not to make sure the fighters get their shit together and have an association or a right. union. So I don't blame him for that. Mm -hmm. It's not like he's preventing it. Right. He's like, do something. You guys are fighting each other right now. Why would we even take this serious? No, he's doing his job. I mean, that's a the thing. As a businessman, he is. Dana is doing Dana's job like better than anybody else ever has. Well, it's, it's also how Apple, you know, how they have their watches and phones made cheap in China. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Steve Jobs at the time, like, what do you want me to do? They're doing it for four cents. I'm just trying to make this as profitable as possible. Whatever happens over there, they need to figure that shit out. But it gives me the access to buy the phones over there for you know pennies on the dollar. What do you want me to do? It will also come down, though, to the power of the consumer. So let's say that all those folks do do a labor stoppage enough to, you know, in That's theory. That's the place where we could have leverage. Yeah, affect uh, a card. You're going to have to have the fans rally to the side of the, the fighters. The fans know, though. The fans but they don't know, know because we don't have the information again. You don't think so? See, well, I, I think, see, I think the but so when you see a a, a girl, a uh, home girl who just she won the Ultimate Fighter, she's like, I gotta sell my Harley Davidson because I can't pay the bills this yeah, month. Carlos so, Sparza. Yeah, uh, yeah, Carlos Sparza yeah. is like, I gotta sell my motorcycle. Pat Pat Cummins, good friend of mine, he posted a picture. Goes, I uh, wish I could buy that motorcycle, but I'm homeless. He's bouncing from couch to couch. Was ranked whatever 14 in the world light heavyweight. I text him. I go, Are you bullshitting your homeless? Mm. He goes. No man, I got MRSA on my leg or had an injury. I was oh. supposed to fight last weekend. I haven't fought, you know, in a while. And I'm homeless right now. I'm just using buddy's couches. I was like, "Fuck, man, can't use my couch." But <laughs> <laughs> how many million did the did WMG pay themselves for management fee for the year? Yeah, was yeah. it twenty five million? Yeah. yeah, something like that. Uh, and you had guys that are ranked top fifteen and can't even a fucking have a place. To it, that's the that's the thing. So it's like I I feel like. People are expressing it, you know, or you see Cole Miller, who he's not a star. Like, he's not going to walk in here and be like, holy shit, Cole mm -hmm. Miller. But he's been in the business. He's a vet. He's had some great time, fights. Yeah. He's, you know, he's a he's a killer, man. One of my favorite fighters. And he's talking about how he, he could barely afford things. 
because they pulled, they just decided to cancel the card in the Philippines. He's like, holy fuck, man. I did a four month training camp. I haven't been paid. I, I can't afford things now. So I, maybe it's not out there enough. Maybe, you know, I don't know. Maybe you're right. But I feel like the, well, cause this is the fucking problem. Cause people see, you know, who's in our face most Rhonda, Connor, Brock, you know, you have, you have these superstars and you have Connor posted up on a Lamborghini every other day. People are like, oh, UFC's killing it. But then you have Carlos Sparza yeah, I mean, posting out Harley Davidson, like, uh, who wants to buy it so I can buy fucking baby back ribs this month? Yeah. You know I just, and you think about it, boxing's that way too. I mean, it's very much of a fast or famine type of business model. You have a lot of boxers that don't have shit. But they're know? also not stars. People aren't used to going without like what they like to consume though and this is my i guess this is my cynicism about the fan base if something like this if you push were to come to shove is they're used to having what they like to consume i went through this years ago with meaning the, what okay so i give you an example so years ago with the nfl it was a quick side story but i i have a, a dog that was one of the dogs that was rescued from michael vick's dog finding ring god bless so you. i covered the story for years while the whole trial went on everything on the air right on my radio show before before I even had the dog. And I always said, you know, if they let that guy back into the league, I'm, I'm not watching the NFL. I don't want anything to do with the NFL as long as he's in there. And it was a real crisis of character for a lot of people, a lot of listeners who were like, this guy is the, the scum of the earth, but oh my God, Sunday, NFL, what am I, you know, what am I going to do? And I had some listeners who were like, yep, I don't want to have anything to do with it either. And then I had other people who just straight up tell me, I 100% don't agree with having him in there. But I can't not have football. I gotta have football. You see what I'm saying? It's so, a, I, but the NFL is a different monster. No, I know. But what I'm I saying, let's say, let's say that the idea, and it's not for a behavior. Because we said, like we that. said, fuck Michael Vick. Yeah. I feel like most people are like fuck Michael Vick. Yeah, but most people. But the problem is, they continued to consume the product the that because of profit sharing the, but, benefited. But him. like, you couldn't wear a Michael Vick jersey. And everyone's like, oh, cool jersey. You right, know, like right. his his brand was done. I get that. Yeah. But uh, to the same to that same point. If Aaron Hernandez was found not guilty, mm -hmm. and we, you know, you look at his background and killing people, blah blah. Right, blah. Right. If for whatever reason he got off as for some crazy defense lawyer, the New England Patriots would accept him with open arms. He's such a good player. Oh, I agree. That's the world we live oh, in. I, I think that, the same thing would because the true consumers of, are going. Yeah, come on, you yeah. score touchdowns, we can get to the Super Bowl. Oh, I think the same thing would have been true of in his prime OJ. 100%. Yeah, no, I agree. All I'm saying is is that a big part of union, and you will see this word You guys are used. saying this thing on flip sides of it. Yeah. What he's saying is that people will always demand having those guys. The same reason why they're going to accept Aaron Hernandez back with open arms is because he produces. Yes. So because people want, so as a consumer, you want those producers. If those producers all of a sudden say, we're not producing anymore, then, then you have a change. Does, what, say, yeah, right? what I'm saying is, does the fan stand in solidarity with the fighters when they know they're fighting the good fight in a labor battle? Do they care enough is what you're asking. That's what I'm saying. Do Only they, if the product gets screwed over. Is the UFC big enough? Because if you look at Reebok. Name one positive thing about the Reebok deal that you've ever, ever seen. Nothing. How many Reebok kits are sold? Not many. Yeah. The fans went, oh my God, it's a terrible deal. I've never For seen Doom. a Reebok shirt on. Brent, it, every, I've never seen one ever in my life. <laughs> I, I, I know, I'm being serious. I'm not even trying to fucking just... I'm me neither. But, I'm like, but the fans realize how shitty the deal is for, for, for the fighters because so many fighters are like, what the fuck, man? This yeah. is terrible. Have you? It, uh, their sales are awful. So they wow. went, all right, we're not buying those. We real, Grant, they're like terrible, but that's... Yeah, I, so yeah now that's where I wonder. Is it because it's just shit's not that great? I know. Or is it because they, they rally behind... I feel like there's it. so much negativity. It, it's almost, to, to your point... I don't know. If it was some cool shit, I'm thinking people still buy it. <laughs> you might be right. If Under Armour got a hold of it. Yeah. Or like Tom Ford started fucking... Let's face them. it. If it was fucking Nike, I don't think it would hurt their sales. It's, they'd you're, be selling right. fight kits. You're right. So it's like a dope Connor fight kit or something like that. But to your point, look at look at SeaWorld with Shamu. Yeah. Once that black yeah, that's came true. Out, yeah, yeah, yeah. everyone went, fuck SeaWorld. Yeah, you're right. And no one that showed up a, at SeaWorld. That is, that's the best case. You're then right. SeaWorld yeah. went, oh, shit, shit, shit. No, no, no. Check fuck, them out. Me and my Look, family. We're taking them for a walk. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we let them back in the ocean. Then a great white we was just, just like, ah, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> We just went to SeaWorld like about two years probably before that black fish came out. Yeah, we were down there checking it out. Like I was, you know, afterwards. Wet. It's well, fun. no, because then the people like recognize me. Like, hey, man, after everybody leaves, you want to come down with the kids? And like, oh, cool, man. We got a little tour action. You know, what I mean, it was it was cool. I'm like, oh, this is badass. I had no idea. 
And then my wife is fuck. I come home one day and Jen's crying and she's like, "You're gonna watch this right now." I'm like, "Holy shit!" What I do? Terrible. <laughs> I'm They're like hitting them and shit. Yeah, that's it's like, like find out you find out Mickey Mouse is getting ran on like yeah. a train on. You're like, yes. "What the fuck?" <laughs> like that yeah, when he gets done with the kids, kidnapping the babies, they put them under. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Like, and then the, the other killer whales are screaming and shit. I'm all. I'm like, oh my god! I can't believe I actually gave them money. Hey, like, game oh. over. Sea World was like, no, 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 oh fuck! At first they're like, nah, that's not gonna do shit. But the masses were like, we ain't doing shit. Their numbers went. Yeah. Then they have like me rethink all in there. zoos. Yes, you know what I mean. Yes, like, all zoos. I mean, we used to go to San Diego Zoo, the San Francisco Zoo, and now like since Blackfish came out, my family we haven't gone to a zoo. Sea World's fucked. We can't no, go there anymore. No, they have I, zoos in I, I general. Like SeaWorld's I sit there, like do. because yeah. I, I guess I was the same naive guy that was like, oh, you know, it's they get animals that were hurt or caught in traps and like rehabilitated them and put them in like it's a much better life to be in there than That's to be out in the thought. fucking wild. Nah. Like, every I'm like then I'm like watching the shit. I'm like. Oh fuck! I was completely <laughs> They're wrong. Fuck this shit. You know I mean? You're right. I'd be yeah. safe for two of you. Locked me in a prison, twenty three hours a day. Yeah. Let me out to shower and go back inside and feed me. You're right. No one can hurt me. But what fucking kind of life is that? No, well, it's like when you go to the circus and you're like, wow, that elephant is so smart. It knows how to stand on its hind legs. How do you think it learned that behavior? Now, what we're talking about here, this is very uh, key to the whole yeah, labor. The sea uh, World's a big one, though. Yeah, that was a big no, one. Once that got out, people were like, fuck you, Sea World. And they're like, all right, we let them go. Fuck. And you know what? And that right there, like Frank we said, painted a is, dolphin. that's the best case scenario if the UFC <laughs> were to get their association together and, and push for to come to shove on a labor issue. But, you know, like it's like when the NFL's tried to do scabs and stuff like that you know in strike Terrible season idea, okay yeah. but the question Shout becomes the movie replacements yeah. yeah well so the question becomes though does the consumer do what's right but painful to them and say i'm going to not watch this product even though i would otherwise consume it because i don't like what it's supporting i'll tell you one thing interesting i was listening to cowboy cerrone's podcast you need a and documentary he, for the fighters yeah well, yeah, yeah, exactly, right? Like, yeah, like Blackfish. Blackfish for us. You need Blackfish or you need a movie. Well, granted, the NFL kind of hit it under the map, but you, like concussions because yeah. like you just it, – and it's going to affect the NFL – 10, 20 years yeah. from now, because now people are so knowledgeable on CT and brain trauma, they're not really letting their kids play football anymore. Yeah. It's taking a hit, right? Scared the shit out so, of me and my kids. Well, now like, – I'm like, my kids now are playing in middle school. There you go. And I'm like, oh, man, I don't know. I mean – Maybe not high school though. The, you know, the, the, right the now you guys are all running like five fives, and you guys weigh 140 pounds. It's all good. Yeah, we're okay. But I mean, once some people running four eights and you're weighing 200 pounds, yes. I'm like, oh, no, I don't want to see. Because that. now we're more knowledgeable, on it and you see these effects. Like, and this hits home. Rashawn Salam, one of the greatest players to ever come to the University of Colorado, just committed suicide. And his friends go, "Yeah, man, he had serious depression, mm -hmm. brain trauma. That's probably what it was from." And so now you have these these. I mean, he died. Shot himself in the chest so, so they could study. They could his study brain. his brain. He knew that his brain was fucked. And up. now we might love football and we still watch it, but I think the NFL is going to suffer from the ripple effect because parents are going, "I don't think so, man." Instead of doing football, maybe let's do basketball now or baseball now. We're not going to suffer the brain. You know, what do you think? It's going to take a while. What do you think they could do to fix it? Nothing. That's like that's like that's like saying, "Hey, how can swimmers not get wet?" It's literally that. What you sign up See, for. I there's think, nothing we can do. It's a violent game. Um, if you change it, do. if you change it, there's no football. No, you I can't fuck with it. Well, I mean, I propose this idea to you. I think sometimes when we make things safer, we inherently make it more dangerous, right? For example, I think if we started looking at the concussions in rugby compared to the concussion and brain damage in football, I don't think they're as severe. They're not as good at, of athletes. I don't know, man. There's some phenomenal athletes playing rugby. But they not don't like leave the NFL, their feet brother. and they don't have a helmet and shoulder pads on. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's something to be said that when I strap you up full of gear, it's like this. Right now, let's go sparring bare knuckle. How hard are you going to punch me? Yeah. How hard are you going to hit me? Yeah, that's fair. You're not going to punch me very hard, right? You might yeah. hit me once I don't hard. I break my hand. Boom. You're, ah, shit. You're going to pull back. Yeah. So I tell you that bare knuckle fighting is safer than regular boxing. And people at first, when I say that, go, dude, are you fucking insane? No, it's true. But it's because if I wrap your hand, though, and put a glove over it. Now I say, oh, look, it's safer. No, it's not. Now my hand is safer, but I'm going to hit you really fucking hard in the head. I take the gloves off. You're not going to punch me as hard, right? I tell anybody, go to the bag right now and beat on the bag really hard, bare knuckle. So I think maybe adjusting the equipment would be an area to where now guys don't feel so safe because even though they're safe as far as bone-wise, 
that kinetic energy traveling through their brain when they make a hit, yeah, your body still does. the same. Yeah. It's like me wearing a glove. It's not patting your brain at all no. when we make contact. No. It's just protecting my hand. So when you wear pads, it's not protecting the guy getting hit. You're talking it's about a different pre- game, though. Now you're changing the game of football, Frank. Yeah, but maybe. I mean, but at least it's a conversation. Or, if you don't want to hurt it, you know. You're just going, you're just going extreme retro. Imagine the, the, the first season. Leather is, helmets? Yeah, the first season is Frank Mirror, the NFL commissioner. Everybody comes out in the Heisman leather, leather helmets. helmets. And well, the, it's uh, because yeah. football gear protects the guy hitting. Makes me a missile. Yeah. It's not Correct. protecting you as the guy getting hit. No. Think about it. Even the points of contact is for a guy but throwing. But a at hit. what point do we just go? It's football. Like I, 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 yeah, I yeah. can see this for the guys. Like what the fuck? I'm not going to be able to walk in six years. Like, yeah. Would you think it was going to happen? Like, like with, with the guys who aren't knowledgeable, I get their argument. But in general, most people know what they're getting into. Yeah, it's it's like it's like signing up for the Marines and you get on tour. Like, what the fuck? Like, they're that was a bullet. Yeah. Are those are real. <laughs> yeah, man. What the hell? I didn't sign up for this. Like, oh yeah, you didn't you didn't read the course guide? Like, you know what I'm saying? So, there's a part of me where it's American. It's football. It comes with this consequence. If you want to do it, yeah. you're probably gonna die about 20 years earlier, but you live a great life. What he's what what Frank's saying though about you know and the same is true like with a boxing glove you know why it, it, it's it's counterintuitive to think that a five ounce glove could be safer than a ten ounce glove. It's just so you don't break your hand, right? No, you exactly. agree with that, Frank. So, oh, so when we punch, I don't break my hand. No, no, no. Yeah. But your brain, that shock knows no different. And guess what? The reason why they do that, the reason why they have us wrap our hands, is so there's knockouts. Watch the first UFC. How many guys got knocked out? That's a good point. Watch a UFC guys nowadays. Are like this yeah. and like this. Right. Because yes. you can't not. Everybody made fun of the boxer, right? Because he wore one hand one wraps. Hand. They're like, oh, what an idiot. No, like, yeah. actually, he's the only guy that could probably hit somebody right now. Yeah. Because he's sat there and went bare knuckle. He's all, well, fuck, I can't punch nobody bare knuckle. My hand will break. Yep. I have too many bones. They're fragile. You know what I mean? Like, people break their it's hands. It's a good argument. Tape. Rogan wants open, no gloves. Mm-hmm. He always talks, he wants no gloves. I would be He thinks they're that. silly. Well, and also, too, like I said, it would make it to where make it more realistic it would change as far as injuries if they wanted to get rid of concussions and ufc mma get rid of the gloves i bet you still have concussions not as great though you just have head kicks and knees now you have knockouts yeah it'll still happen but not to the same regularity as is to throw a punch but But more guys still get knocked out with a straight right hand or a left hook are your biggest percentage of knockouts compared to the but frank at what point do we go it's fighting of course, there's gonna be concussions. Well, yeah, of but course, then, there's gonna be. Then if it's out. fighting, make it bare knuckle. That's fucking fighting. That's fighting. You know what I mean? That's to your I point. Mean, uh, if anything, putting gloves and wrapping our hands make it unrealistic. When's the last time you got into a street fight? I'm like, hold on, buddy, go inside. The wife and fucking wrap Every my hands time. real quick. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> <laughs> kids, bring, kids, I, give him a mouthpiece. Shit, <laughs> right, give me the mouthpiece. <laughs> Stitched around. I'm like, here, man, that's what I pay you for. Go. <laughs> uh, yeah, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> I got a piece so bad that I want to get into your story. We're gonna take a break. All right. Piece All right. So bad. <laughs> it's a legit argument. All right, back from the old pee break. I take one about uh, once a show now. Yeah. I try I try to get my Rogan. Rogan, he's like a camel. He can hold it for about three hours, but lately he's been breaking. Like on the Fight Companions, yeah. he'll break, which oh, it, yeah. it, it brings me joy. Have you heard he about breaks. Operation Mockingbird, by the way? Uh, you know what? Eddie Bravo <laughs> talked my ear off in uh, No, that's Austin why I asked. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I love those Fight Pizza Companions. Pizza too, yeah. that guy. Um, I want to talk to you because if we were talking about a story and they're like, yeah, I was at my uh, at my other gig, man. I'm like other gig, I at the brothel, and I was right. like, oh, "Wait, save it for the show." Oh, what's the source of entertainment for our show? What the fuck are we talking about? You work at a brothel? Yes, at yeah. the Bunny Ranch. Uh, at the uh, at the Love Ranch, which is owned by the guy who owns the Bunny Ranch. And where's that located? Uh, about an hour outside of Vegas. Oh, not bad. Yeah, because the Bunny Ranch is far, right? By it's Reno, like Reno. Yeah. And what 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 do you do? What there? do I do? Well, uh, my official title would be media director. So, you know, I whenever you see like a crazy press release about, uh, you know, we're going to offer uh, Britney Spears a million dollar contract and to come work there or we're going to create some sort of like student loan payback program for college students who come work there for a summer. A lot of that, that's just some goofy idea I cooked up. You match them dollar for dollar. Right? So you don't yes. have to yeah. So you but you don't have so you're not on location. You yes, no I am. Oh you're yeah. there. You yeah. you go there. I have daily. an office there and that's a point uh, of contingency with him though. Because he could do his job yeah. from home. <laughs> I was gonna say I don't why do you have to be there? Well that's because well, you know yeah, well, there's other there's other elements to it, and I part of it is basically being like a mediator between a couple of crazy hookers, 
you know, on a, a it's pretty basically a regular babysitter basis. Too. So, so yeah. the Love Ranch is a place where men go to, and it's a, a brothel. It's sanctioned in uh, Nevada, yep. the state regulated Nevada, by the state, regulated, mm-hmm. where you can go and there's just hookers, and you pay them, pay for and sex. you stay the night or whatever. If you want? You got enough money? You betcha. Right. Whatever yeah. deals you want. You ring the buzzer. You come in. Hey, Brendan, good to see you again. Have a seat here. <laughs> hey, don't and, say uh, it again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. Three times in one week, sir. I like your style. <laughs> and the girls come we up. We have your room for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have your coconut water and coffee yeah. ready to go. Uh, Dark, just how you like Oh, it. they're those people, for yeah, sure. Yeah, I would be that guy. There are those sure. people. Uh, but uh, the girls will come out, and they'll line up, and hi, my name is. And you can either pick one or five of them out of the lineup. And how much, how much are they for just one? It depends. it depends on the girl. Yeah, well, they all have their own. They set their own prices. So what's going to happen is the girl. Say you pick the girl. Girl's going to take you on tour, show you around. You'll end up in her room. You'll sit down. She'll go. Uh, you know, what, what do you have in mind doing? And you is give her like some ideas. Is it like a menu, or I just tell them? There is. There is. If you want something. Because do I look at them like? What's an RJ? Yeah. And she's like, well, an RJ. Yeah. You yeah. negotiate no, with her, but I think basically the, the best way to answer your question because I ask the same thing. Yeah. Like blowjob and just mm. sex is like a thousand bucks. No, it doesn't have to be that much. I'll well, give you less. I can get you a deal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, <laughs> oh, wow. Could be less? <laughs> or it could be more. Listen, really? it's like, it depends on the girl. Yeah, absolutely. That, so what's, let's just play devil's advocate. So sure. what's the lowest? Is some girl like, I don't know, bro, $10? No, 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 no. no. Uh, I direct you to a certain street corner. Um, basically, you know, I would say probably... 100 bucks? Three, no, three, four, you know, somewhere in that neighborhood. And then high is... Five, six thousand. Oh, high is because well, you get is, like porn stars and people that fucking high six figures. Oh yeah. Right. Oh yeah. I mean, when when yeah, well, you can go on their their web page. Sure. And fucking make appointments with chicks and shit. Uh, do you say uh, love bunny? <laughs> yeah. What's it? Is it love yeah. bunny? You got my soul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll figure yeah. it out. <laughs> no, but because I got a I got a, a friend who's yeah. gonna be there. Sure. Yeah. No, but I mean, it can be anywhere from that to when uh, when Lamar Odom was there, we ran his black card for seventy five thousand dollars. Hold the fuck up. So Lamar Odom, that's where he OD'd in this whole thing. He saved him. Fuck off. He's the guy that I swear to God. Hold on. Lamar so when did you know Lamar Odom was checking in? Yeah. So he was like, Hey, I'm coming through. And you guys are like, damn, Lamar Odom. And now the girl's like, God damn it, that seven foot black dick. Or are they like, <laughs> All right, let's get it. No, they're happy. They're happy because they know he's gonna drop bank. Yeah. A guy like that, he's in a suite, and then does he pick out numerous girls? Mm-hmm. So the way the way it works, this is fascinating. <laughs> so the way it works is there are a number of people of uh, Lamar Odom's celebrity ilk that will come in and out of there that you never and you even can't know are say there. their name. They like a bungalow no. on the back type thing, right? Yeah, right. There's VIP. actually yeah, there's a whole like three bedroom house behind the brothel. That and that's where Odom was. That uh, if you wanted to, you could say, "Hey, I'm coming out. I'm gonna, you know, the, my car is gonna pull me around back. We have a car service. We'll send a limo to get you." And that's what we did with him. We went to his house in Vegas, picked him up, drove him out, drove him around the back. I knew he was there, and he'd been there for a few days. But even if you had been another customer in the brothel, you would have never known he oh, was wow. there. Oh wow! Yeah. And so when he comes, you know to. So he'll pick the girls. So I'm mm-hmm. sure he had multiple girls. Yeah. yeah. So what we did in his case, uh, the they did the all the girls went back to the house he was staying in, and they did the basically like a private lineup back there, and he picked out two girls, but he could have picked as many as he wanted to. And when you say he's there three days, so is he waking up? He's having breakfast there, lunch, yeah. dinner. He's coming and going. Oh yeah, no, he's there the whole time. And in fact, oh, do you guys have a full service kitchen? And everything? Yeah, there's a cook. <laughs> so he's having like eggs and bacon and shit. And he's like, sure. hey, get Becky back here. Yeah. Yeah, there's what? there's a full kitchen back the there. Thing. Yeah, there's that's a, my. I'm yeah. fat, bro. Undercover fat man. I'm like, hold on, what kind of food are we talking here? No, he we, I didn't ask that question. Yeah, I feel. Yeah. No, we put a. You know, there's a cook back there, and uh, in fact, there was a couple times that he ordered food out for the whole house, and and we sent a driver to get the food and brought it all back. He's real generous. And so he's there for how many days? Uh, about three and, and third then, days when and things there were went one, south. Did, did, then, so he's there for three days, crazy, yeah. 72 hours. Mm-hmm. And then did you guys hear a scream or was a girl like, uh, yeah. so, he's not doing well. So what happened was uh, it, was, Frank it was about, I don't know, two or three o'clock in the afternoon. And I'm in my office and I, I knew he'd been there for a few days. Wiling out, but you guys just care because the credit card's swiping. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, and uh, and I knew he was there. And at the time that this happened, I was the only other guy in the house besides him. So we didn't have any customers in there or whatever, nothing going on. So I'm in their office doing some something, media something, 
And I hear one of the girls that he had been shacked up with screaming my name, coming running up the hallway. Richard, my God, my God, come quick, you know. And I go out of the office, and she's like, something's happened to Lamar, something's wrong. And so I go running back toward the back, and where his house, with the house that he was staying, our VIP house, was a long distance from my office. So I'm running down hallways and all this kind of stuff. And there's a like a secret entrance into the house where you can come in like through an employee entrance, but people don't know it's there, this door. And so I pop in the door, and the door opens into the master bedroom. Mm. And so I get in that door, and he's on the bed on his back. And uh, I had to ask you that. I was just like, yeah. Was he dressed? No, he had a t-shirt. Just a t-shirt. On. He had boxers okay. on. Oh, okay, I was like, yeah. was he four? Just yeah. the shirt, no, <laughs> shirt and socks. <laughs> <laughs> Legos on the side. Right. Uh, so just shirt, undies. Yeah, yeah. So terrible um, white socks. So I, 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 I jump up on the bed, and um, I mean, I'm immediately looking at him and feeling him like he's cold and kind of purplish look i mean it was immediately evident something was very wrong with oh him. dude yeah. we have foam coming out of that yeah something in pulp fiction here yeah yeah, was yeah. Like, come on man right. do some he also was snoring like insanely loud like something's wrong snoring like coma type you yeah. know just roaring now snore. do you do you have any uh background with dealing with people with ODing or drugs or anything no like so that? here's the interesting thing despite my unemployable appearance uh i am 100 percent straight edge i've never touched a drug i've never drank a drop of alcohol in my Good life for you but i've been around plenty of ne'er-do-wells like him so so but so but so so okay so you find lamar yeah. you think he's oh you've you're obviously like he's not breathing he's purple yeah so okay so i jump up so i so I get up on the bed i see what's going on with him and and, and i knew cpr and that was one th- weird thing it's like i'd never been in a position to have to do cpr so it's one of those things where in my head i'm thinking okay this is that's what you train for, yeah. you know, like make it, you know, here we go. And so, but when I got up on the bed, he's breathing, but I knew he shouldn't be on his back. And so I, I got him. To it was side. weird. It was, it was, we were, we were talking, uh, ju- jujitsu. Yeah. It was kind of like an S mount, yeah. you know, cause but I'm kind of like, back, get yeah. him up on his side and he's 300 pounds. I mean, this guy's a giant and so it's dead weight. So I get him up on his side and when I got him up on his side, shit just came out everywhere, like blood, vomit, foam, just everything. And it's like on me. And I was just like, "Holy shit!" And but so, you didn't have to go mouth to mouth. Thank God, right? No, no. And and so and so that's where. So we call nine one one, and there, you know, there's other people in the room have come running out at this point. And so I yelled, you know, "Hey, call nine one one!" So I'm I'm sitting on him to keep him propped up on his side because he wants to flop back over on his back. And uh, they get nine one one on the phone. So they hand me the phones. So I got kind of got the phone like this. I'm like, "Okay, here's what's happened. You know, here's what I'm dealing with." And I asked the, the two girls that were back there with him. I said, "Okay." Tell me everything that he's taken. Do not lie to me. I want to know everything. Because we would never knowingly tolerate drugs in there. We have a zero tolerance policy when it comes to drugs. But if you come in, we don't body search you. No, I mean, we're I'm not trying strip to party. searching you. Right. I'm trying to party. Right, I don't right. need you soda on me while I'm trying to get <laughs> right. weird. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. I paid goddamn hard, cold cash for yeah. this. <laughs> right. If I want to do some molly and get weird, don't judge me, man. Right. But so, he's probably doing some weird stuff. Yeah, so if you have something on you, we don't necessarily know that especially right. in that kind of setting where well, he's back there in the house and by it wasn't himself. the drugs you were thinking about like that's what at first thing everybody was thinking too because mm-hmm. they came back and obviously drug tested him mm-hmm. there wasn't cocaine and stuff in his system right uh i don't i think there might have been something what are we some what, kind of what, what was it over, wasn't it i thought that what the problem was wasn't it the over counter well we'll get to that so it was on, that's where i'm headed so as i'm as i'm sitting on him i go I tell her so, okay tell me what all he's taking and you hear this on the 911 call i mean that's out there publicly now you can everything i'm telling you you can hear me say on the 911 sure. call so i said what's he taking and she goes well he drank like three quarters of that bottle of uh, Cavassier or whatever sitting on the nightstand. And fuck. and I'm like, okay, but it's been three days and he's a giant, That's so maybe not, not that big yeah. of a deal. What else, yeah, lady? Yeah, exactly. And she goes, well. You ate an apple? God damn yeah, it. What yeah, else? Yeah, yeah. exactly. And well, she you goes, had three grapevines. All right, you know what? Get the fuck yeah. out of here. And so she goes, <laughs> she yeah, welcome to my job. <laughs> yeah, she goes, I uh, she goes, uh She goes, he said that before he got here, he had done a small amount of cocaine. I was like, okay, so you know, relay that to the nine one one operator. Then she said, and he took some of these, and she holds up this this. 
packet and it's it's a big room so it's like i can't really see what she's holding up and i go throw me that and so she throws me this thing and i look at it and it's this herbal viagra supplement called reload it's packaged in a red pill so i read the milligram dosage to the 911 operator on the phone turn it over and all that and it said like Oh, no more than one every 24 hours or something like that. And I said, how many of these has he taken? And she's like, I think like 10 or 12. So he was just eating Pop them, them like, like Skittles candy. and his foot long dick was just right. rock hard for 72 hours. Right. Right. That's what it did, huh? Yeah, I Those thought herbal I, I thought he was just it. happy to see me, but I no. was like, <laughs> yeah. I couldn't put him. I on know when you saw him, it was like, <laughs> you're like, all right, get your right. dick out. It was like this mic. You're like, all right, well, I'm just gonna. <laughs> Good lord, man. So this that too, that, by the way, that turned out to be a real source of the problem because this stuff had been like banned by the FDA. Is it the company mi- that was out of mixed business. with the other drugs? Yeah, what did it? Yeah, yeah. And so he had basically had a series of strokes. When the when all this had happened, so uh, the nine one the ambulance gets there pretty quick, uh, especially for being out in the desert. They got there pretty quick, so they come in. There's three EMTs and me, and so they go, "How are we going to get him out of here?" Because they couldn't get the they couldn't uh, get him to fit on the gurney. He's seven foot, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we each pulled up a bed sheet corner and held it like this. And carried him out like hammock style. He's breathing at this time? Yeah, he's snoring real loud. Now, they're not like in a super big hurry. And I was actually thinking, okay, maybe this is good because they're not rushing him out. Or they just don't give a fuck. As soon as he got him in the ambulance, the EMT was like, all right, you know, come with us to the hospital. And we get to the hospital. Now, they take him to Pahrump, which is this little small town that's basically between Vegas and where the brothel is, 20 minutes away. Closest place with a hospital. So we take him there, and we're in the emergency room. The cops show up and everything. And um, that's when it got weird because, no, that wasn't already weird, but they, they go, they yeah. go, yeah, they go. That's when it got weird? The yeah. seven-foot dick pulling your yeah, face yeah. is where it got weird. They, go, uh, they go, yeah, you know, he's, 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 he's probably going to die. Like, he's probably not making it. And that, I realized, is why they weren't in that big of a hurry. And so now he, a little time passes, an hour or whatever. I'm sitting in the, the emergency room, waiting room, and I'm thinking to myself, like, as much as this guy had going on for him in his life, this is what it's come down to. The dick pills, these these is herbal the hospital, dick pills. The guy doesn't even know. Kind of, yeah, basically. I mean, really, I mean, I mean you're basically and, the guy he's going to die right, with, and you guys. Right, out in the, the middle you, of nowhere, right? God, and so then, dang. okay, so now they've got him somewhat stabilized. They decide they're going to fly him to Vegas, care flight him for spe- better, cu- better care. They get him outside. They start trying to load him in the helicopter. He won't fit on the helicopter. No one thought about this? I guess not. And so I'm watching them like try to uh, I can't get him on here. And shit. Yeah. And so they end up driving him to uh Vegas. Which and, is how far? An hour. Mm, yeah, an hour. Yeah. Dude, we're talking about precious time. Yeah. Man. And and I mean I was convinced at the time that you know he, he probably done. wouldn't make it. So uh I go so back change up your celebrity death pool. <laughs> yeah. Frank and I <laughs> Frank and I play yeah, in the this, inside information. Yeah. You know Doug Stanhope, yeah. the comedian? Frank and I play in Doug's celebrity death pool. <laughs> And <laughs> people have asked about that, but I actually think it's more impressive that because I didn't have him on my team, I was actively working to resuscitate yes, him. And screw somebody I else agree. who already had it. Yeah, yeah. Paper so, yeah. <laughs> so we get back, I get back to the brothel, sheriff's there, and the sheriff goes, Okay, prepare for they said, you know, all these all this media oh, is, shit, is driving man. from LA right now. Like all these satellite trucks. Like, are like the from gold LA. rush to San Francisco. Exactly. They are yeah. fucking flying. Yeah. And they said they're gonna be here at like four AM, just get ready, you know? And so I, I stayed there overnight at the the brothel. Sure enough, you know, three or four AM, here come like headlights. You can just see yes. them come down the road. And they lined the the road outside the brothel with the satellite towers and everything, the antennas for like three days, and it was just nonstop uh media. And publicity can't really pay for it. Did it help the business? Or did it kill it? Well, no, it didn't. It didn't kill it. Uh, as far as helping it, I mean, I don't know if it brought more people. Maybe not because of notoriety, but it probably got more people talking about legal prostitution. Because I mean, there's did, a lot of people who don't realize. But it's I legal. would go and be like, all right, who are the two girls with Lamar? Not right. Them. I'm gonna go. Well, I will else. tell you this: it was not good for three days worth of business because uh, nobody Shut wanted down. to show up with all the they didn't want their face. all the media. Right? Yeah, yeah. In fact, uh, uh, there was one guy there 
who uh, just a, you know, well, they call him a regular customer, but not a celebrity. Uh, there was a guy there. He drove a Hummer. And he'd parked the Hummer out in front of the brothel, and he got too drunk to drive the night before, so we took his keys, and he's crashed out. When the media gets there, they just assume that's Lamar Odom's Hummer, right? But he got so drunk that he couldn't find his keys the next day, so a tow truck had to come tow his Hummer away. Shit. So they're hooking it up, towing it up. All the networks are filming this Hummer getting towed away, and the guy walks out of the brothel like one cowboy boot on, one in his hand, just all still disheveled, going... I don't know why everybody's so interested in a man's Hummer getting towed oh away. What, what is going on here? And ho- yeah, especially if that's on TV, his girl's like, <laughs> "That's Frank's Hummer." Yeah. <laughs> the fuck? Yeah, and so, so but I tell you, we had so we had all these tabloids show up and everything, you know. And the the the, the what blew my mind was I got a call from a tabloid while I was still at the hospital. And the guy said, I mean, word was starting to get out what had happened and everything. And the guy said to me, you're at the hospital with him, right? And I go, yeah. And he goes, uh, can you, you're in the room with him? I said, yeah, I'm just right off the room. He goes, can you get a picture of him, oh, like with all the tubes hooked Jesus up with him and everything? Christ, man. Get that to me. And I'm just not playing Scumbags, that game. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but it was 72 hours of that. And it was amazing how, I mean, what do you think that is? Well, I'll, I'll tell you some numbers. Probably I mean, hundred grand, right, for that picture. How much did they I don't pay? know? It was that much, but we had at the, least fifty. Yeah, I mean, I I said I'm not doing it, but we had like uh, you know we had the Today Show, Good Morning America out there, but we oh, also had the guy fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd probably be like, ah, I don't <laughs> know. But we also He's gonna die anyway. I don't like, li- like the Lakers anyways. <laughs> yeah, we also had those tabloid shows out there, and over the course of that 72 hours, I mean, I had produced because a lot of these producers are freelance, and you know they get paid bounties for yeah, stuff man. like this. So I had guys coming up, you know, hey, can I talk to you for a second? Let me get you over here for a minute. So you guys have, uh, like, security surveillance footage. They wanted the footage. They wanted, like, a copy of the credit card receipt. And they were offering, I mean, you're talking about tens of thousands of dollars. Serious People offering for that stuff. What we could have done for the show, man. I know, man. You couldn't have wore the shirt and been like, listen, if you want to hear all about it, fellas, just come here. Yeah, That's what you get for partnering with uh, somebody with some integrity. But the funny thing is, (laughs) the way way that that, that, the way that, 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 that hit me with the UFC was, I mean, I didn't do it. I didn't really hide it, but it, I just didn't bring it up in conversation. Yeah, I, didn't, I had no idea. And a couple of days later, I think it was when Robbie Lawler was fighting Carlos Condit. I, I had a press conference to go to. You know, the media day is all yeah. the scrums and everything. And I walked into that room. I think Robbie Lawler was the first guy that like stopped his scrum. And he's like, Oh well, hold on. What is this bet, story? Man. We have a story yeah. to tell. Yeah, He's I been bet. leading a double life or were, whatever. How relieved were you when he found out Lamar didn't die? Because I think yeah. even the even the Kardashians, even Chloe, was like, "Holy shit, this motherfucker's still alive!" Yeah, no, like, it, y'all are like, "Cool, man." In all seriousness, it was like I had never like been in a situation like that where I'm like handling. I mean, physically handling somebody where I'm thinking if this person isn't dead, they may be dead like in a second. It's so scary, man. Think for him, like. This great career, more money than God, and a Kardashian, and he's been on the Kardashian show. And literally, if you talk to anyone who knows him, the, I guess he's the greatest guy ever. Every, yeah. He's the best teammate, a good person. Like everyone just would die for this guy. And he's dying in a brothel surrounded by women well, who don't care about him. I think guy, he's always had a problem with a, that stuff because then in college he had a problem with his, some his dad was an addict, his mom was an addict. Like everyone he knows has died. Like he comes from a rough background. Yeah. It, a phenomenal player, phenomenal. But then a guy who saves his life, he don't know your name, doesn't no. know you, anything. No. And I you, you think the Kardashian like, thanks for saving Lamar. Here's a mill. Yeah, I, I don't and the thing is I barely know I don't know sports unless it's combat sports. And so I knew I mean I knew who he was and all that. I'm actually from Dallas, so I remember when he was at the with the Mavericks a, a, or whatever. Amazing player. Yeah. You're talking about a but, seven foot guy with handles, quickness, yeah. you know, legend in New York for basketball scene. I mean phenomenal player, yeah. man. But I mean freak. I didn't I didn't Super freak. I didn't know much about that. I didn't watch the Kardashian show or whatever, but just the idea that this guy it was like, I mean, I'll never forget it, obviously. And and that image is just seared into my mind of, like, looking at almost death, right, For in the sure. face. And the thing is, it's like we had that experience together, but only one of us was there for it. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, he won't remember. Yeah, he remember. No and so it's like at some point, I would like to talk to him. I'm surprised he hasn't reached out to you or someone hasn't reached out to you on his, on, on, on just... 
from his team just be like, thanks, man. Like, holy fuck. If you didn't act so fast or if you didn't at least give a fuck, how easy would it be for you to walk in there and go, oh, he's sleeping. He'll probably mm-hmm. sleep it off. Or, hey, or let's say you were busy or something. you had something come up and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah I'll get to it. He's dead. There's no well, Lamar. And and worse than that, you know, over, yeah. when when it all happened, Chloe was doing some media and she said something to the effect of, you know, oh my god, in a brothel, you know, what why couldn't he have just, you know, gone to some escort or something? And I he thought you know, that's exactly right. And that's why I said, I said, you know what? If that was an illegal hooker in a hotel room, she would have left him Game dead. Over. Yep. You would have found him dead the next no, morning. Believe me, nobody's calling the cops to the scene of illegal really, prostitution. Really, it's the best case scenario for Yeah. Him. If, yeah. if he was in a, let's say he he was just in a hotel, like a fan, let's say he's at the Ritz Carlton, they don't find him till the next morning. Yeah, he, the 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 luck was on his side. He was at this brothel, and you were working. Yeah, yeah. So I so basically I, saved his life. Well, I just I hope that eventually there's a chance to have a conversation because I just I, hopefully I'm I'm sure uh, I, I may never have that experience again. And it's just like you want to talk to the person who was on the other side of that, you know. And if not if not help them, I mean, just tell them, man, you know. Let me tell you. I mean, let me give I mean, you my at, perspective. At least of what send happened. Richard a box of fucking chocolates, your new makeup, something Kardashians. Otherwise, I, this guy's not around. Yeah. Well, I just, I'd like to, I just like to talk to him. But it was, uh, I tell you this. It, I never thought, I thought I would live my whole life and never have anybody cast to play me in a reenactment. But that I have now oh, that's seen happening. that. Oh, you it's have like, seen yeah, it? it was like on Court TV or one of those Sick. shows. Did the guy yeah. look like you at all? He he looked uh, uh, equally no. sort of deplorable. You know what I mean? Did, like it looked like a messed up Chris Angel type yes. character. <laughs> yeah, but 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 a little a little lazy on the particulars. Ah, like man. I would I would I do I must say selfishly I would like to talk to the casting director. You know what? The, but you, I wouldn't take it personal. It's the yeah. budget. You know? Sure. Like, well, sure. all right. It kind of looks like him. Yeah. 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 It was. Uh, but, you know, so I had that experience. Dude, amazing story. Brilliant story. T- working in a brothel will get you some good stories. We were taping on the way down and telling some, so it's it's not a yeah. one-off. Phone booth, fighting is, phone booth fighting is equal parts MMA talk. And I always tell people when I'm not uh, breaking down fights between uh, mixed martial artists, I'm refereeing fights between hookers. <laughs> they get into it, huh? And they some scrap. days that's the more compelling uh, uh, contest is those I bet. two. Going the, I'm assuming the girls are pretty good looking. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's like, here's, I mean, in, in all candor, here's how I would describe it to you. Uh, there's going, you're going to see a few, uh, and I'm just talking across the business as a whole, right? Sure, across the legal the business as a whole. No, not just there. But, uh, you know, over the average day, you would see a few girls and you'd be like, holy smokes, this is like a supermodel. These girls do, I can pay to have sex with this person. Yeah. Wow. Then there's going to be a couple where you're like, I don't probably not if you paid me the grateful right? type yeah yeah but the vast majority in the middle is going to be kind of a sliding scale where maybe not the hottest girl you'll see all night but when you find out what the terms are you're like okay now I get yeah. that yeah yeah I get that yeah. I get that it's like going to you you walk into the Ford dealer and you want that Mustang you know you want mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. but you're gonna settle you know you're gonna settle for the Focus because the gas mileage and that's stuff. right like it's still cool you yeah. know. No, that's that's absolutely right, and that's how there's a million different prices uh, accordingly. It just so depends on your taste. It depends on your taste, and it depends on your what standards. they're what they're <laughs> yeah your standards. What, and you pay? what, what they're what they're willing to do. That's hilarious. Yeah. God, I could talk to you forever. Anytime about you have we'll talk off yeah, there, yeah, yeah, sure. I have so many yeah. detailed questions, but I don't want our fan base to judge me. Sure. So we'll do it off air. Well, Let's go right into fan questions. I was gonna say maybe what we need is like a fighter and the kid remote broadcast. You guys ever think God, about taking the show out idea. live? You know? However, Callan in that brothel <laughs> would be <laughs> such trouble. I'll yeah, be my like, next nine one one call. Ah, yeah, you'd be your next, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Count in that fucking brothel would be fucking classic. Oh. Oh, fan questions? Or? Yeah, let's do fan questions. All right, right on. We've, well, we basically covered all the <laughs> MMA shit. True. All right, so Samoran's asking, Have this is a good question for Frank and for Brendan. Have you guys ever wanted to fight each other or had a chance to fight each other? Uh, we No contracts or anything. Frank, no, we, we were always kind of... The, the only time there was even remotely chances of it is after I beat Gonzaga, 
I think they said, who would you want to fight next? And Frank, and I've told you this before, Frank's always been like a, a role model, like a hero, someone I wanted Definitely. to be like. So I was like, man, I'd love the opportunity to fight Frank. And then you did an interview, you're like, uh, I mean, and they brought it up. And you're like, after his fight over Gonzaga, yeah, I'd be down for it. And then I was like, oh, shit, there's a chance I could fight Frank. And that was the only kind of rumblings ever. But other than that, no. Yeah, we just never got never. pitched up against each other. Mm-mm. Cool. What else you got, brother? All right, so T Bone Jones, eighteen fourteen, is asking Frank, "Have you ever had to draw any of the weapons you carry, and what were the circumstances behind what happened?" You have weapons on you now, Frank? <laughs> no. Uh. Boy, do you remember the first night we met? I was scared. Me too. I was scared. Brian's like, "Is that serious? Is that an act?" I'm like, "No, he's dead serious." Uh, we thirty weapons. On we'd him. known each other all of ten minutes, I think. And uh, we were in the uh, dressing room in uh, at uh, the Hard Rock, yeah. right at your Vegas Vinyl. gig. Yeah, and uh, Frank started displaying some some what he was he was showing some techniques, some drills, right? And Brian was loving it. Brian, Brian was, was way into it, right? And you ever you seen the movie Mask when they're yeah. like, "All right, what do you have on you?" And he's just pulling out random yeah. shit that. That's how I was like. Are you kidding me? And he had knives. And he was loving it. And Brendan and I were huddled like like together. Like oh, I just didn't want Brian to get him. Like what's this thing do? do, do yeah. Do, do. yeah. <laughs> no, I haven't had an opportunity ever to use them. Uh, <clears throat> are you chomping at the bit to use them? <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. Uh, I think it's like anything else. Uh, I'm just always prepared. I, I think just uh, certain people just have certain mentalities, and I've always had more of a uh, <clears throat> not a pessimistic view of the world, but. I realize bad things happen, you know, that's why I have fire extinguishers in my house, uh, you know. That's why you have uh, health insurance. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's just one of those things. And so I think that uh, personal protection is your responsibility too. I mean, anybody that thinks of calling the police is to help them. They're just there to carry a report. Yeah. They're not going to stop anybody. They're going to get there in time. No, I mean, I mean, how long does it take for murder. someone to mug you or, or you know, to, to, to rob you? You know, you're talking seconds. And sure. What's the police response time? I mean, unless it happens to be the units going by you and it happens, um, they're there to pick up the pieces. They're not really going to help stop anything. They're, no one's there to protect you. You know, I mean, that's a legit argument. I, I don't ever have to worry about like what's in my car because I know I'm just totally like clean, straight, boring, whatever. If I get pulled over, but a couple of weeks ago, yeah. I dropped Frank off at the airport and I drove his car back. Right, dropped the family off and I took his car back home. And all I just th happened to ask: Is there a bazooka in the? Yeah, that's or the some thing. Shit? I asked. I just said I'm dropping off. I go. Wait a second. Are there? Are there weapons in here? And he starts oh, taking yeah. an inventory, you know, telling oh gosh, me shit, what yeah. to do if I get pulled over. It's like you're driving the Batmobile. Yeah, like, exactly. There's shit all yeah. over that thing. Yeah. Well, and I explained to him, like, hey, look, man, you get something happens, you get pulled over. Just tell the officer, obviously, it's not your vehicle, it's mine. And just tell him the circumstances. There is a firearm in the, in the vehicle, and, you know, and I don't, where it's going to sure, be. Sure, he's at. so stressed. Yeah, you look like me. Oh, okay. Like, there's yeah, no stereotyping going that. on. Yeah, especially when your first, uh, your first a a admission is, this is not my vehicle. This isn't mine. This is Frank no. Mears. Yeah. All right, buddy, yeah. out of the car. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what else you got, Chin? That's hilarious. <laughs> uh, let's see. What are your well, loot Atkins zero? What are your thoughts on the UFC judging system, and what is your ideal way of seeing fights judged and scored, Frank? Um, well, I mean, right now it seems like the best thing they have going is the ten point must system. I wish they would actually one adjust the point system a little bit. Um, you know, I think the ten nine, and it seems like to get a ten eight is such extreme, and there's such differences in thoughts. You can essentially have a guy in a three round fight mash you and it's 10-9, mm -hmm. and then he can barely edge you out rounds two and three and win the fight. I think that fundamentally just bugs a lot of people because we're going off of damage. And, and, you know, you can, and so if you win one round, I think you should have it to where you can win around 10-5, to 10-4. to four. You know what I mean? If you really mash someone up and then go from there and have, you know, criteria, like, you know, every time we knock them down, we'll drop a point. So if you have a big round, it counts. It counts. Because right than now, just edging it, it doesn't. And, I, and then another rule fair. that I wish we would actually change, and I've been fucking uh, barking up this tree for a long time, is that if I'm on top of you and you're in my, I'm in your guard, if you double overhook me and connect your hands and look at the referee, they don't get to restart the fight. You don't get stood up because at that point you're stalling. And then if I'm stalling on top, they take away my top position, right? That's a way of punishing me for stalling. But if you stall on the bottom, they punish you by standing in a sub neutral, which punishes the guy who had the advantage. Yeah, that punishes me that you're rewarding now yeah. a guy stalling. And so to me, it's like, well, just take a point. It's the same as you holding the fence. That's fair. Look at a guy go, hey, man, you're not fighting. 
you got to do something. Move. But that stalling's also stalling you from winning the fight as far right. as doing damage on top. So it's stalling like me from doing yes. something, which kills the fans. Yes. And then also, too, we're rewarding a behavior of inactivity and also the fundamental just, you know, uh, theme, you know, uh, that we're fighting each other. Now you don't have to train jujitsu. You don't have to train to get up. You don't have yes. to train to block me. You don't have to train wrestling to control just hands. Hang on. You just got to hang on. Well, When's that skill set going to ever work anywhere else except for when there's a referee watching you fight? True. It's, it has no relevance. It's great. So point. I wish they would change that rule. Let's do two more, Chin. Two more? Um, let's see. Jay Landeros, 87. What do you both think of John Jones' win over Henderson at the Submission Underground 2 event and him possibly going against Chael and Chael doing the event a week before the fight or the week before he fights Tito? A lot of questions. So. Yeah. I'm probably the last one. <laughs> um, so I, I mean, the the submission underground thing, I don't like that. It's in an octagon. Like we I like my jujitsu, jujitsu. Like there's no reason to have that in a cage. You brought up a really valid yeah. point. Makes no there. sense. You, you know what? And he was right. I didn't even think about it's conflicting this. too. But he here's, brought up something. That here's really makes what sense. I think happens: is that when you see the cage, you think a mixed martial arts fight, especially when you see two guys you're used to seeing in a cage fight MMA. Yes. So what ends up happening is sub subliminally you think you're seeing a lackluster fight because why aren't these guys striking Correct. each other? At, when in reality, you could be seeing an awesome jujitsu match. It's just the rules are different. So I think that's why it's important to put it on an I, open I think mat. it's a terrible idea. It, it's no different than you go to watch a porno and you're like, here we are, baby. And then it's just no sex, all dialogue. You know what I'm mm. saying? Like being in a cage, I'm expecting to see fist punch. I'm expecting the this kind. Of, there's a reason there's a cage there. There's yeah. this tenacity. There's this kind of underground kind of vibe. Well, when these guys are just grappling, it, it, especially if you're just a normal uh, average uh, onlooker, you're not gonna dig that. You're like, yeah. this is bullshit, man. So I think you need to live leave jujitsu with jujitsu and like just have an open mat, almost like a wrestling mat, and it's gonna go so much further. As far as Chael competing in it. Uh, the week before he fights Tito, I mean, why not be in shape? He's not going to take any punishment. It's not like he's going to get hurt. John Jones, I mean, is just going to annihilate those guys. Would you go against John in that if they offer it to you next year? In a grappling match? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've rolled with John. I know, yeah. I feel comfortable with that. Uh, but rolling with John, knowing how good he is at it, I actually, uh, on our show, we talked about that, uh, that Dan Henderson. I was like, oh, he'll submit him. Dan's never making it out of the first round. You know? Yeah, I agree. That uh, I think Dan was just doing it to do it to help Chael out and, and make money. And then obviously John, and he's a freak. He's a freak. But you've rolled with John, with John yeah. on top, don't you? Yeah, I mean, so I mean. His, I mean, his, his wrestling's amazing. Yeah, wrestling takedowns. I mean, if it's points, he's going to beat me on points. You know what I mean? But as far as uh, you know, submissions and stuff, I feel very comfortable with that. My money would be on you, sir. <laughs> what else you got, Chin? One more. Sure. Uh, let's see. Dreaded Hair is asking, do you think more fighters will start moving to their natural weight classes after all this weight issue stuff going on lately? It's tough because... Like, I was looking for an edge, man. Like, Rogan's always talking about how he goes, I wish they'd just get rid of weight classes. Like, you just figure out what's the best weight for everyone to walk around and you have those. The problem with that that boxing has is they're like, this guy's a... 12 weight division champion he went from 144.5 to 145 to 145.5 so there's like all these belts and there's all these it's hard to keep up with so it almost waters down everything mm -hmm. i almost like that there's whatever eight divisions eight mm -hmm. belts and it's fucking impossible to get that belt it's mm -hmm. so tough to get i wouldn't mind if they actually added a few more weight classes i think me too but you it, you, you, there can't be 10 of them no 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 but i think the same as like collegiate wrestling you know what i mean um <clears throat> If they, we just went with 14, you know, I yeah. can see that, you know, but even divide it up. Like, I mean, have a 220 class, yes. you know, uh, have a class between 185 and 205 because yes. that's a big jump, you know, 170 to 185. That's a big jump. It's not to the lower weight classes that it starts like, okay, every 10 pounds. I don't think you should ever have a weight class within 10 pounds of another one. 55 to 70 is tough too. Yeah. I mean, but that's a 15 yeah. pound yeah, weight jump. So, I mean, if you went 155, 168, 179, like, I mean, that's there was, a, you know what I mean? You could mix it up a little bit better. And you're going to get better performances, I think mm -hmm. too. Well, because, you know, that's the thing guys right now are trying to calculate. It's like, okay, I can be big at this weight class, but I'm going to feel like shit. Or I can be average at this weight class and feel good, 
what's better. You know, you know what I mean? You like, know what, though? I, I Kelvin's think, stuck in uh, That's what I was going to say. Kelvin's I, in between. I, I think sometimes, though, what happens is the fighter is so resistant to doing it, and then when they do it, they wonder why they were ever resisting it to begin with. See Anthony Rumble Johnson. Uh, see Donald Calvin. Cerrone. You know, look at what he's doing at welterweight. And now Kelvin Gestelum. I mean, for all the trouble and money that this has cost Kelvin Gestelum, at least today, he's probably got to be thinking, maybe I shouldn't have been so resistant to well, fight. No, yeah, but you're, but Kelvin's saying, I, I want to be at 70, because I think Kelvin looks at the 85ers goes, Jacare. Yeah. You know, you got these monsters. Yeah. Ro- Rockhold, uh, Yo Romero, they're way bigger, stronger. Weidman looks huge compared to him. Yeah. So, I mean, because so, even that's so what I thought 70. about. Like, when you've seen him lock up with... Uh, uh, Tim? Tim. It was like... Shit, man, you're right. He's a small middleweight. Smaller middleweight. Mm-hmm. His structurally, just his reach and his height. And then 70s stuff for him to get to. I think it's. it's I don't he's think it's that between. tough. I, I think he's in between. I also think it's a discipline issue for him. Oh, that yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. Most people I talk to is a little bit of a discipline issue. But then also, too, I think Cowboy Cerrone is a good example of that. When he fought his last fight, I'm looking at him like, man, he doesn't look as big as Matt Brown. Matt Brown looked def- decidedly bigger than him. But I think that cutting down to 155 depletes him you know what i mean there's shots that he took against matt brown that if he'd have been at 155 i don't know if he takes that's a good shot. point i but i think cerrone at 55 right he fought for the title lost uh he beat some of the very best guys in the world at 55 70 he's just been a killer but who's he beating mm-hmm. like let's i think the jer- he looks better he's healthier at 70 let's see when he goes against uh damian maya uh, what, what if we had like a, if there was a 163 weight class i think even 165 champ. yeah yeah, you know what I mean. I think I that, think he'd be champ at seventy. The, I think the verdict's still out. His, I, I think his fight against Matt Brown was in his best performance. Remember, Matt Brown's lost six out of his last seven. So, he, granted, he head kicked him in the third round. There was re, there was a round where Matt won. Remember, yeah. Matt dropped him. Matt yeah. had him in trouble in a triangle. Matt's lost six out of seven for God's sakes. So, when, no, I think we all had a one to one going. Into yeah, the one to one. So then let's. Let, I just I think before we say seventy is perfect for Cowboy. Let's see him against the upper echelon, and then because at fifty five he did pretty well against the upper echelon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he did. At seventy, it's the verdict. He out. beat everybody but the champs. Yep, he only lost in title fights. Yeah, so I think the verdict's out on seventy. I I think he can get it done. He has a better chance to be champ at seventy. Yeah, I don't think UFC's gonna let him go to fifty five. That's another argument. But uh, per, dude, you guys have been fucking great. Thanks I love for having, having you guys, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. you can get your guys' podcast off. See. Talking about the freaking brothel, UFC experts, life, Frank Mir's freaking new voyage and uh, <laughs> Russia and this new fight league, which I want to get into. But we can do that next time. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's uh, phone booth fighting, right? Phone booth fighting is the name of the podcast. Uh, you know, iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, all the places you guys are. And then phoneboothfighting.com is our website and phoneboothfightingshop.com for our uh, t-shirts and merch. Love it, man. Yeah. And then Frank, if we want to watch this Russian fight league with a bunch of Khabibs, where, where, where can we get it, man? We're, we're going to be streaming it on our uh, Phone Booth Fighting Facebook page. Nice. They actually hook it up. So Saturday morning. It's 7 a.m.? Yeah, it's usually like between 7 and actually, 10 a.m. Sunday morning this time. Oh, Sunday morning. It's 7 Fights to 10 a.m. depending on what part of the country you live in. But if you go to our Phone Booth Fighting Facebook page, you can watch it for free, stream live right there. I'll be right watching it man i dig it thanks for coming in guys yeah this is the fun kid with the phone booth fellas that's the way i'm gonna end this mm-hmm. phone booth fellas mm-hmm. we're out